at Union High School in El Centro, California. It is time for the 78th renewal of the Bell Game between the Brawley High Wildcats and the Central Spartans. This is the 99th year that the two teams have played. The series started back in 1922. In the 70s and 80s, they actually, well, in the 50s too, I believe, and 60s, early 60s, uh, back in the old Imperial Valley League, the teams played each other twice. But uh, more recent history has shown that uh, it comes down to the bell game. And as usual, there is a lot more on the line than who owns the victory bell. Good evening, I'm Tom Ronco. With me is Coach Don Biaggi, and we are here to bring you exciting bell game action. And we'd like to first of all thank our very, very fine sponsors for a great year of uh, regular season Brawley Wildcat football. And that includes Doc Don, uh, Dr. Don Barnitsky and the Vision Care Center, One World Beef Packers, Desert RV, A&R Construction Company, The Man Company on Main Street, Fry Chapel and Mortuary, Brant's Beef and Ojeda Industries. Also, Heart Insurance Centers, Johnny's Burritos in El Centro, Brawley and Imperial. Brownies and the Town Pump now reopened in Westmoreland. Brownies, right where it was. Great lunch today. Smith Kendall Insurance and Real Estate, Clayton Drain Tile Maintenance, Carter Taylor and the good people at Lidco. The Dom Team for Real Estate, OK Rubber Tire, Clicka Parker Insurance Company, and Jordan Central Implements in Brawley, El Centro, and Indio. And a beautiful night for football, Don Biaggi. You couldn't ask for a better night. Uh, we've had uh, three great nights, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Last night's game up in uh, Calipat was a beautiful night, a great game. And now we've got the big, big, big one here between Brawley and Central that uh, just gets everybody rived up. Yes, and uh, uh, Central, of course, has won the last, uh, I believe, four straight Bell games. So, of course, their crowd is here and primed up and ready to go. But as we look across the way, it appears all 1,700 seats that uh, Brawley was allotted were um, have been sold. And we are looking at the bleachers, uh, the Brawley bleachers, and we wanted to show you that everybody is there. So if they sold 700, 1,700, there are 1,700 folks there and probably a few that snuck in. So a great crowd for the Brawley Wildcats. They will be on the opposite side. So as you follow the webcast, uh, <laughs> do not let your ears deceive you because you're going to hear cheering when it's... You don't want to hear cheering and you're going to hear booing when you want to hear cheering. So we are on the, the home side, and we're going to catch all the feedback from Central, and uh, hopefully there will be more booing uh, than there will be cheering. Central uh, has left the field. They will come out probably with the horse and the whole nine yards, and that will be coming up in a moment. Meanwhile, for the Brawley High Wildcats, according to Coach John Self, all hands are on deck. Everybody is available. Return of uh, Damian Abarca. Number two, look for him to be somebody that we haven't had a chance to talk about for the past six weeks or so, but he is now back. Uh, guys had some owies, uh, according to Coach John Self, and I think the coaches too, Don Biaggi. Everybody was just kind of worn down after nine, well, ten straight weeks of football. Yeah, there was no break anywhere in it, and uh, time for anything to heal, and you got to make decisions as a coaching staff. Uh, to protect your kids, and, and they've done a good, good job with that. Okay, uh, for the Wildcats, i watching them warm up, and we are usually not here as early as we wanted to get here today. We've been here, seems like, all afternoon. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's been a while. But uh, I noticed that uh, in addition to uh, Tanner Carranza, who has done an excellent job of punting for Brawley, Really, from the guy that tried out the week of the first game against Modern Day, has done a tremendous job. The backup, I've never known who the backup was, and Tanner did miss a game, and I don't know how I missed it. We must have not punted. I think it was against India or somebody. But the backup is Aiden uh, Torres, so uh, he is number 12, and we hope we don't need to see him. For the Central Spartan, well, for the Brawley Wildcats, everybody again, all hands on deck means Ethan Gutierrez. 
Uh, third year starter, if you consider the pandemic five game or six game 2020 season that was held this past spring as a season. But Gutierrez, who was pressed into uh, service on the very first game of the, his freshman year on the varsity, and then took over the second game and has ably led Brawley to winning seasons, led them all the way to the San Diego CIF semifinals and were one play away from a victory before a missed tackle allowed the Hoya to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat and in case you never followed the Wildcats after that back in uh, 2019, La Jolla went on to not only win the San Diego section of CIF, upsetting Scripps Ranch, but they went on to go all the way to the state finals, losing that by about six points. So that's how good that 2019 football team was, Coach. You betcha. And uh, tonight uh, you're going to see two teams, and Brawley's going to be uh, two or three steps up from that team tonight along with, uh, with Central, and uh, we're going to have a very nice ball game tonight, and it's too bad we couldn't put another 5,000 people around in the stadium uh, to see this game because if you're not watching it with us, you're going to miss something very special. Okay, Brawley's heading down. Uh, we're going to have the great Spartan band, of course, uh, under Renee Baker, I believe, is still the band director. They are getting ready to come on the field. Uh, also, the uh, Spartine, the flags, uh, not Spartine there, the flags for the, for the uh, great Spartan band, and uh, really a tradition. And uh, if you look back on it, in a non-politically correct time in the 19, I believe, early 1970s, Central Union High School had to be a trailblazer in many ways. They not only had a black head football coach in Cal Jones, but they had a black band director in Jimmy Cannon. Jimmy Cannon. So yeah. two, two great men. Two great men, irregardless. And I think the lesson is that in El Centro, if you can do it and excel, it's been traditional. Nobody really cares what color you are. You betcha. And uh, Brawley Wildcats uh, band not here tonight. Not enough room for them. They usually give them a little. Well, they might be some over there in the corner. Let me take a look. Uh, the Wildcat Band. Uh, yep, they got a pep band type of thing. We're going to show the pep band. Is she? Can she show the pep band to people? The pep band. Okay, we're going to focus on the pep band. Uh, and again, these poor kids are going to be out there. They're going to cheer, but they can't probably see hardly anything from where they are. But that's not the point. The point is tonight they're a part of the Brawley Wildcat football and, and everybody's got to do man up and do their job, which is what Coach John Self said, all hands on deck. Okay? Along with Ethan Gutierrez, who I was talking about before, I got sidebarred. Uh, Isaiah Young, who does not, is playing in his second bell game. The first was in the fall. A uh, loss by about a touchdown to the Central Spartans up in Brawley. But this is the first one with all the regala, all of the crowd, all the everything. So he is going to have to be pumped up. Of course, his father, offensive coordinator for the Bradley High Wildcats, Brandon Young, uh, was a winner of two bells. And uh, Brandon probably is impressed upon the team. Coach, how, how 20 years from now at your reunion, you're going to want to pose with a picture with that bell. You betcha. That bell it means everything but to both these teams. And uh, they want to bring it back so they can bang it away on Cattle Call Parade. Yep, and that's coming up in a couple of weeks. That will be actually in the middle of the San Diego CIF playoffs. Brawley currently sitting at number seven. If they lose tonight, it is possible they could drop somewhat in the rankings. However, Central has, McCor uh, has been on a run with coach uh, Rookie Pena, uh, David Pena Jr., a Brawley High uh, Wildcat, um, and then went on to play at College of the Desert and uh, Maybell State or one of those small colleges in the Midwest, and a great coach in his own right. Um, he has been on a run, and that run, however, has taken the Spartans from the San Diego CIF Division Four to the San Diego Division Three, and now to Division One, a two, and so they are the highest divisional team in the Imperial Valley. That means if they beat you, it's a good loss. 
And if for some reason they lose to Brawley tonight, they are sitting around 10th, uh, I think, in the uh, San Diego CIF Division II poll. And a loss tonight could send the uh, Spartans maybe careening down a little bit. So very, very important game. Also, both teams come in 4-0. And, uh, hey, what else is new, Coach, that league championship on the line? Absolutely. Uh, the, the teams have developed uh, over the years to where they make it one game to claim everything, the bell and the league championship. So it, it's, it's been big. Everybody else is trying to catch up with them. But right now, it doesn't look like either Brawley or Central want anybody to catch them. So enjoy, sit back, enjoy the game tonight, and uh, you'll see a great game. Okay, we are going to look up real quick and see if I can look at the Division II uh, uh, power rankings and see where Central is exactly. And Central is at 10, as I thought, but they are just uh, point something or other ahead of both Point Loma Morris and Bishops. So again, a very important game from the fact that CIF could be on the line for Central. It's not going to take much uh, losing to a Division Three school. For the Wildcats again, and we don't want any good losses, but it will not, shouldn't affect their CIF uh, standings as the number 17. All right, Wildcat football brought to you by Jordan Central Implements in Brawley, El Centro, and Indio, Clicker Parker Insurance Company, and OK Rubber Tire, along with Ojeda Industries in Brawley, Brant Beef, Fry Chapel, and Mortuary. And they've been with us all year long, and we want to thank our sponsors uh, for bringing uh, every Brawley High Wildcat game to you. We started a long time ago, it seems like, back in August, in Chula Vista, right near the, bo the border, the other border, and uh, uh, with modern day, and uh, the Wildcats are now getting down to where this would be uh, perhaps one of their uh, tougher games. Uh, for the Brawley High Wildcats, their scouting crew tonight is going to be uh, Coach Lawrence Landy and Coach Rick Rubio. So they'll be up in the booth right next to us, and they'll be uh, calling down. And, Don, the uh, eyes in the sky can see a whole, a, a whole lot more than a coach can see down on the field. Yes. They, uh, you have a wider angle of it, and you get to see uh, a little further away, you see a lot of slow motion. When you're down too close, you've you're got a tunnel focus, and you're not seeing everything that's happening that may have caused the big opening or caused an instantaneous loss. So uh, uh, these eyes up here are extremely important for the coaching staff down below. Okay, going to give a shout out to the people who have the game up on the big screen. That would be Lloyd and Betty Miller, who are, uh, I'm glad they have it up on the big screen. And i uh, like to thank Laura and uh, Kayla for being with us tonight. I get that right, Kayla? Okay. Uh, who, are, who are running the cameras tonight. And uh, um, it's, uh, uh, they're, we're ready to go. Now, also tonight, let's take a look at the Central Spartans. And we've got uh, their quarterback is a junior. And his name, just had it here, is Damian Rodriguez. And Damian is much traveled. He came to he was raised in Hoville, came to Central High as a freshman, uh, quarterback, uh, trying to quarterback uh, their freshman team. Then that last year, which would have been 2020 in the pandemic season, he found out during the pandemic that a quarterback from Imperial was transferring over and he probably wasn't going to be the starter. So he went back to Hodeville and actually played against the Brawley High Wildcats in the first game of the 2020 pandemic season, played in March. Then Central needed a quarterback and I guess went and brought him back. There was some eligibility issues early in the season, so the first couple of games were quarterbacked by number 11, Hayden Hernandez, but the eligibility and all the moving around has been straightened out. And so uh, Rodriguez will be the quarterback tonight. In the backfield, Charlie Sullivan is a running back, 6'1", 185 pounds. He's not particularly fast, not particularly big, but holds on to the football, but is a good pass receiver. 
and you're going to see the football in the air a lot tonight. Central will do everything out of the gun with Rodriguez, and they just kind of throw the ball all over the place. They score a lot of points, and uh, no doubt about that. Uh, but on the other hand, they also give up a lot of points, and uh, we're hoping that the Wildcats will be among those that can pile on to that. We're going to get their schedule up here in just a second, and, and I will give you some examples. Okay. Central comes in tonight with a 5-4 and four record. Brawley is 7-2. and two. But do not not let that fool you. Central has had the much more difficult schedule. But again, that has become necessary because they are in Division II, and they need to play Division II and Division I schools. And Central has. They came out to open the season with Mount Carmel, currently the number one team in Division Three, and Mount Carmel beat them here at Spartan Field by a score of 33 to 17. Next week, the Central went on the road and won 37-27 over Division Two Point Loma. Point Loma again, one of those middle of the road teams in Division Two, but again, a high-scoring game, 37-27. Then Palm Desert, and it's been so long, I can't remember the last time I did a Palm Desert game. I had to be in the 1990s or early 2000s, but I'll tell you what, the Aztecs are still someone that you don't want to mess with. They are 8-2 and two at the moment and leading the Desert Empire League, and they crushed Central 54-14. to 14. Then they uh, went on the road again, did the Spartans, to Vista, and the Vista Panthers down them by a score of 47-35. to 35. Again, another shootout. Christian High School came here on the 17th of September. And the Patriots out of El Cajon also won in another shootout, 44-28. to 28. Then the Imperial Valley League started and Central started racking up the Ws, beating Calexico 42-6. Uh, uh, they took on Del Valle. That's a long story. A team out of Texas. They went there in 2019. Del Valle was supposed to be coming in 20, and it didn't happen. And they came this year. And Del Valle, with a similar power ranking nationally to Brawley. Brawley is 11.5, and Del Valle is 10.3. Another shootout, 36-28 in favor of Central. Central then defeated Imperial, 28-7, and then crushed Crosstown rival Southwest 42 to nothing last Thursday. So both teams well rested coming into this. For your Brawley High Wildcats, season started out on the road in a shootout with a team, and Brawley unfortunately had a pistol and they had a cannon, and they would be modern day the Crusaders crushing the Wildcats 53 to 21. Uh, next week, the Wildcats travel to Valley Center for a very warm, warm a game up in the hills and lost to the uh, Jaguars by a score of 17 to 6. Then Brawley got better against a series of weaker opponents, uh, crushing Indio 48 13, downing uh, Cibola High out of Yuma. The Raiders, not them normal selves, uh, Brawley winning 49 8. Then Gila Ridge came in and Brawley uh, beat them. They couldn't play on Friday, they played on Saturday. It didn't matter. Brawley 49 and uh, Gila Ridge Hawks. 13. And then Brawley got into a game which is going to be an interesting watershed. Fallbrook came and they are Division 5, but they are the number one team in Division 5. And Coach Don Biaggi, they played like anything but a Division 5 football team. No, they, uh, they played uh, way up above their, their level, which, you know, according to the way uh, CIF runs things now, uh, it doesn't show that it's, it's what they, they are. And it was a Donnybrook of a game. You missed a heck of one. And there was uh, the overtime, which Brawley won. And it was a great win for the Wildcats. And I'll tell you what, that overtime, Don, that being able to, to uh, keep, keep everything going. Uh, and uh, I, I think that's an impressive win and one the Wildcats are going to need to reach down and, and remember tonight. You bet, because that was a game that could have gone either way, but there was no give up in the Wildcats. And when they got into that overtime, they came out of the huddle, and there was something different about it. And the next thing you know, the game was over, and the Wildcats won. Coach John Self would like it noted, and I think, and I absolutely know it's a truism, 
The first team to run out on the field carrying the American flag where the Brawley High Wildcats started that tradition about five seasons ago. And it's a, it's a Central's picked up on it, and I think it's very, very appropriate for a game of this magnitude. I'd like to remind you, Wildcat uh, Webcast brought to you on the Desert Review and by Wildcat Broadcasting is sponsored by the Dom Team for real estate. See Doug and Andrew for all your real estate needs. Carter Taylor and Litko, Clayton Drain Tile and Maintenance, and Smith Kendall Insurance and Real Estate. Also by the Man Company on Main Street, A&R Construction Company, Joel Aguirre, a Brawley board member, and Desert RV also on Main Street, One World Beef Packers, and Doc Barnitsky and Vision Care also on Main Street. They are now going to bring out the colors, but in the meantime, we can get in the rest of Brawley's schedule. Uh, Southwest, Brawley won 50-6. Imperial, Brawley won 27-15. Was not that close. And Calexico, Brawley was able to win 48-7. And that brings us to tonight's game, and we are going to have our national anthem. Some nice fireworks. That's a prelude to what we think is going to be uh, a lot of fireworks on the field. And there you go. We've caught you up to date on the two teams. And again, uh, Brawley uh, looking to try to uh, uh, recover themselves in a certain aspect. Uh, for the Brawley Wildcats, however, it's, it has not been a, a problem with staying close to Central. Over the last four years, it's been pretty much just a, a an issue with getting just about enough points. Last year, the Brawley High Wildcats uh, in the spring and the uh, aborted spring season lost by a touchdown. And they uh, I did not get what I wanted up. Uh, in 2019, the Brawley Wildcats uh, <clears throat> And uh, for the Brawley Wildcats back in 2019, they lost the Bell game. And that was really the only crushing defeat. Brawley lost that one 41-7. But remember, Ethan Gutierrez, coach, was a freshman. And Central sent everybody on a jailbreak and just simply leveled him on the first play. And Ethan never recovered. And I, I, you can't blame him. I mean, we just all didn't like the rest of the game, but there was nothing that young man could do to regain himself. No. This year, he'll remember that, though. He remembers being here. You betcha. And uh, when, you're, when you're young and you're just starting on out, a good coach on the opposition will try to upset you right away. And they did just that when they sent everybody, and uh, it, it's hard. If you look back at your own self when you got something really difficult thrown at you and you're trying to figure out how to how to recover from it, it's awfully hard to find an answer to it. But he has found an answer for the rest of the years he's been quarterbacking and now it's going to be an interesting game for both number 7 for Central and number 13 for Brawley. Okay, 13 is Ethan Gutierrez, 23 is Young for the Central Spartans. 
Number two is Charlie Sullivan. Number 27 is Angel Ortiz, a senior. Number 64, uh, let me see if I can get it, 64 is Jace Ramirez, a senior lineman. And number 10 for the uh, Central Spartans is going to be Skyler Cook, a junior. And speaking of lineman coach Don Biaggi, looking at Central, as usual, there is a lot more beef on one side of the line than the other. They have Nicholas Jimenez, 285. Um, Jose Valadez, 278. Ha Br Brennan Havens, 290. Jose Vargas, 240. Uh, Jonah Huerta, 245. Uh, grandson of Rudy Huerta of uh, Calexico fame for any Bulldog fans that may be listening. Salvador uh, Kirati, Kirarte, 248. And Anthony Ramirez, 285. And a couple of guys that go 250, and they will be very active. That's Michael Taylor, number 61. And Jace Ramirez, again, as I talked about, uh, at 250. A couple of other 200-pounders. And you know, Coach, it's not initially does that weight advantage uh, show up, but it's kind of, I always use the analogy of pushing your refrigerator across your kitchen. First couple of times, it goes pretty easy. Then it gets a little harder and a little harder. So the Wildcats have to be aware not to wear down tonight against Central. Yeah, they uh, they got a big line, but it's leverage. It's all about leverage. You got to find the leverage that you can get from the on the opponent, and if it means you got to hit from a little lower coming up, or you can hit straight on. You got to take a, a right or left angle area and get them to turn a little bit. There's something out there that each one of the kids are going to be very uh, easily maneuvered on, but. Brawley's got to find it. And once they do, there's going to be some big action going to take place. I did not get who won the coin toss. Uh, Central deferred. Central deferred. Brawley Central receives. deferred. Okay, one of the things I don't agree with is taking a picture with the referees to hang at a local establishment. I, I, I just don't think that's appropriate. You're the officials. You're supposed to be unnoticed. You're supposed to be stealth. And there they are out there mugging for the cameras, and I don't know. I, I just don't agree with it. No, this this game doesn't this doesn't belong to be um, held up to get a picture taken. Well, I hope it doesn't belong to them. That's 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 my other one. So Central wins the toss. And they defer, so the Brawley High Wildcats will be on offense. And here we go with the 78th bell game. Deep for the Brawley High Wildcats uh, is the number six. That's going to be um, da 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 Daniel Camacho Jr. Camacho's got some room and gets pushed out of bounds finally and kind of weakly. So he gets it all the way out to the... Uh, Daniel Camilo Jr. gets it all the way out to the 36, 39 yard line. So nice return by Camilo. No, 35, 35 yard line. Okay, return they to the 35. Yeah, no, he just spotted it on the 35. So Brawley will have the first possession, first and 10 at their own 35 yard line. Ethan Gutierrez is your quarterback, your lone running back, and Wildcats are going to come out with uh, wides and slots on both sides. Young in the backfield. Gutierrez looks over the central defense and now he's gonna get a snap whenever he's ready. And here comes the snap and the give is inside to Young and Young is loose. He's at the 40 and he's all the way down to the 45. A big run off tackle as coach Don Biaggi was talking to me about prior to the game. And Don, they took a page out of your playbook. Yeah, they, uh, that was well designed. Uh, the blockers for Brawley's right side just leveled, uh, leveled them and, and pushed them the way Central wanted to go, and that alley opened right up. A gain of 30. No, 20, excuse me. Gain of plus 20 for Young. And Brawley now with a 
First and 10 at the central 45 yard line. Gutierrez again with the same formation. Looks over the defense. Uh, not very strong either way, no tight end. Just straight up. And now he's gonna, gonna wait. And here goes Young. Oh, he fakes to Young. And it's a pass out to Camilo. And Camilo's gonna pick up five yards. Pass complete to number six, Daniel Camilo. Well disguised play. Yeah, got me fooled. <laughs> I thought Isaiah had it. But it's not hard to fool me. You know, the defense of uh, Central is very much like uh, what Calexico was playing. The linebackers are uh, three, three to four yards off. At least have been playing off the line of scrimmage. That gives a lot of room for the, for the running back to be able to uh, maneuver in. Okay, trips to the right. Lone receiver on the top to the left. Probably with a second and five. And now Gutierrez fakes, and they close on him. But that gives Isaiah Young a nice running lane. And Isaiah is going to pick up a first down for the Wildcats. 42, Tanner had, took the ball. Oh, that, that was, was Tanner. Tanner? That was Tanner. Okay, number 42, Tanner Carranza. Uh, got the guy with the glasses correcting me, and we're, we're underway here. Nice run by Tanner. And Tanner, a nice power back, a nice charming story we'll try to tell you about but in the meantime the Wildcats are on the move and they have the ball down at the central 34 yard line make it a pickup of six for Tanner Carranza and a first down for the Wildcats same formation trips with a wide receiver top high now uh, I believe it's uh, Carranza remains in the game and here we go and here goes Tanner again. And Tanner weaves his way down. And Tanner's going to be close to another Brawley first down. Depending on the spot, he may have it. 25-yard line. Okay, so they're going to give him nine and take it from the 34 to the 25, where it'll be second and one. And Brawley... Coming out a little bit strong. Now they'll come out. They like that formation. Coach is behind us calling some things out. And uh, Brawley's going to stay this way. And I believe Isaiah Young is back in the backfield. Ethan Gutierrez points out something to his offense. Looks around. And here we go. And he's going to keep it himself and turn it upfield. Spins and weaves his way. And that, that's a completely different Ethan Gutierrez than there was two years ago in 2019. He spins his way all the way down to the 16-yard line. First and 10. Another first and 10 for the Brawley High Wildcats. As uh, Ethan picks up nine. And Brawley with a first and 10 from the 16th. And uh, again, they're going to now flip the formation but keep a tight end. So Brawley strong, way strong to the left trips and a wide receiver and the give is up the middle to Isaiah Young and Young is going to plow forward and looks like he's going to pick up close to nine yards too. Number 23 on the carry, Isaiah Young. Down it to the nine yard line. Okay, to the nine yard line, so that's going to be a, a pickup of seven and here we go and on a second, second and three from the central nine I believe that Isaiah Young has taken it into the house. Oh, house. Off a of left, uh, between guard, left guard and tackle. So Central decided to defer and put Brawley on offense. And uh, for the moment, that decision is questionable. With 8.05 to go, Brawley took a little less than four minutes. And Jorge Harro is up and through the uprights. And Holy Toledo, just like that, the Brawley High Wildcats are on the scoreboard. And we are going to be back after this message. Exciting Brawley High Wildcat football is brought to you by Desert RV, locally owned and operated by Joel Gonzalez. Joel and his crew offer RV storage and service and now offer auto body repair and paint as well as a full line of truck accessories. Stop by Desert RV at 1552 Main Street in Brawley or call them at 760-344-9200. Desert RV, a proud sponsor of Brawley Wildcat football.
Okay, welcome back to the webcast. Tom Ronco, Coach Don Biaggi, and uh, our film crew. You are watching this on The Desert Review on YouTube. And uh, give a shout out to Lloyd and Betty Miller again, uh, who help put all of this together. And the Wildcats take an early 7-0 lead over Central as they march the ball uh, pretty much uh, fit 65 yards. And here's the kick, a little pooch kick. Central's got their up man up there, and down goes the intended, the young man that received the football. 14. That's Marini. Uh, Marini for the Central Spartans. He, he makes the uh, catch and is immediately taken down by a plethora of Wildcats. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I... Uh... Central is going, the first play from Central is going to be a pass play, and I think it'll go down to uh, one of the corners. Okay, we're, we got a prediction. 8.02 to go here in the first quarter. Brawley up 7-0, and everybody in motion, and they're going to throw over the middle, and I told you that's going to be open, and making the catch out there. Skyler Cook, number 10, the tackle for the Brawley High Wildcats by number 31. And let me find my my rooster or roster. 31 for the Brawley High Wildcats, Chris Camilo. So first and 10 central. Looks like we're going to have offsides. Offside. Okay, the Wildcats go offside. And so it's going to bring up a second and five, excuse me, a first and five in Brawley territory at the Brawley 49 yard line. Rodriguez puts a man in motion, takes him back out, and going to go out in the slot. Wildcats trying to cover. Rodriguez has a man open, and they're going to call pass interference as number 10 got sandwiched. And for the Brawley Wildcats, it was Aiden Torres, and I'm not sure what Torres was thinking. Everybody on the central side, I, I, don't, I think that was just badly played by the Wildcats. If it's intentional pass interference, it will be a 15-yard penalty. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Tom. That ball was passed and before any contact was made. Yeah. Now, I know the big contact, but uh, I didn't see the little contact that would have interfered that because Central was stopped. I mean, All right. Well, what it is, what it is. That's two, people, people can see that for themselves, but penalties. again, a, criti a critical call, two penalties in a row, and again, that's going to suddenly fuel Central's drive and they don't need the help from the referees. Rodriguez again with the man in motion. Now they're going to use him as an H-back. They're going to try to run and I believe that is going number to be two. number two. That's Charlie Sullivan. Sullivan is going to pick up a couple of yards on first and ten. Charlie Sullivan it's going to be a gain of two yards. He's going to pick up a two. I said a couple. Two will do. Bring up a second and eight at the Brawley 33 yard line. And uh, as we said, Central will not run the ball much. They do it to keep you honest. And when you, one of the tip-offs, Don Biaggi, is when that man in motion becomes an H-back and tries to block. Probably up 7-0, but Central moving the football with the help of a major penalty. Wildcats try to get in there, and now Rodriguez has an open field, and he's going to run, and he gets a pretty good hit out there. Nice open field tackle for the Wildcats. And with a run up the middle, and uh, looks like number 31 on the tackle. So number 31 is Chris Camilo coming up, and seven is going to pick up six, which is going to bring up, I believe we're in four down territory. I would have to believe that. A third and two from the Brawley 27 yard line. And uh, they're going to send, uh, and I, I think he's going to get it. But uh, a couple of hard fought, uh, hard fought yards there. Go, 
Okay, that's Charlie again, that's number two. And he is gonna pick up enough for the first down. It'll be first and 10. That was a good, uh, good surge on the line by Central. Okay, it is uh, now at the 24 yard line and there's gonna be a penalty flag. 67 and Brawley encroachment. Oh, offside. So another offside by Brawley, and, and it's okay to be excited, guys, but you are aiding Central and abetting the enemy. So that's going to be a first and five. Brawley not showing a lot of discipline. The ball should be around the Brawley 19-yard line. And quickly out is Rodriguez. Everybody is in, and Rodriguez is going to try to run, but he doesn't get anywhere. He is stopped. 74 That's on the first contact for Brawley. 74 for the Wildcats, I believe, is Alon Carrillo. And uh, the Wildcats, uh, that was number two again. They tried to run with him. 74, uh, no, is Anthony Arriaga for the Wildcats. And that one got kind of stuffed, so we'll give number two uh, zero yardage and that's going to make it second and five that's how important that first penalty is Don Biagi yeah okay it gives, them, gives Central more life than they should have had that's exactly right yeah. now they're going to try to throw and oh nice play that is a great play out there the pass looked like it was going to be completed and I'm trying to get the number of the young man that knocked it away I can't see it I can't see who got his hand out there. Number five for the Brawley High Wildcats. Is that Michael? Is that Michael? Uh, no, that number five, yeah, is Micah Washington. And uh, Makai Washington. Makai? Uh, Makai Washington. What a great defensive play. And the pass is incomplete. And we're going to need more of that as the Wildcats are now facing a, trying to hold off a third and five at the 19-yard line. And here comes Rodriguez. This is kind of a design run. And he's going to fumble. The ball is loose. And the Wildcats have it. I'll tell you that right now. 74. Number 74 with the recovery. He's going to be fumbled. And that was number seven, wasn't it? The quarterback on that, running yeah. that one? Yes, Rodriguez. He turned he up. Fumbled. He had, he had an opening and he made a cut. And next thing you know, the ball was rolling on the ground like an Easter egg and it was scooped up and taken care of by Brawley. First and 10 Brawley on their 13 yard line, 12 yard line. Okay, so the Wildcats for the moment stave off the Central Spartans. So with 4.57 to go and Brawley leading 7-0. They will take over again, it looks like on their 14, Don? Yeah, it looks like the, the, the 12, 12 yard line looks like. Okay, and here's Ethan Gutierrez, and he's tripped up, but he stays on his feet and dives forward. Coming over the top of him was Sullivan. Uh, and Ethan just becomes a... 24-yard uh, line. 24-yard line. So it'll be 12, gain of 12. So he first down. So he picks up 12, and Brawley has a first and 10 at Brawley's 24-yard line. And the Wildcats moving the ball... 4.35 to go here in the first quarter. They are leading by a score of 7-0. And just now trying to take advantage of the first turnover of the game. Brawley with trips up high. And they're going to give it... Oh, and <laughs> nice run by Isaiah Young. Again, a lot of motion and everything else. And Young holds on to the football and picks up uh, about six yards. Leading blocker for Brawley was number 71. Okay. And 71 is, I'm just going to take this out here, 71 for the Brawley High Wildcats is Jonathan Garcia. So nice job by Jonathan. Brawley now with a first down. And um, first and 10, the ball at the 29. No, make it second. Yeah. Second, I'm sorry. And a nice little pass and a completion. Out to the Brawley 37. Okay. That's the first down. That's going to be a Wildcat first down. 
That is 13 to number six, I believe. And the pickup on that is going to be eight yards and a Brawley first down. Brawley quickly out, and they're not wasting much time. Trips up high. Lone receiver low. A fake and a wide open Platt over the middle, and Platt has a first down. Robert Platt, and I think I saw his parents' car today in Brawley because I was driving down Main Street, and it said Bell game number 17. And what a nice throw and catch. One first of the, down on the 47. So Brawley gets another first down at the Brawley 47 yard line, so a pickup of exactly 10 as Gutierrez now starting to open up. And they're going to give it back to Young. And Young twists and hits the hole. Looked like there might have been more there. But it closed up pretty quickly on, uh, on Isaiah. A pick up uh, three. So it'll be 23 with a plus three. And that's going to bring up a second and seven. The ball now at uh, midfield, more or less. And let's see what the Wildcats do. 2.21 to go, first quarter. 7 to nothing, Brawley, and they are moving the football, at least out of their backyard. This drive started way back on the Brawley 12 yard line. Gutierrez now with a couple of wide receivers and a slot on the right. He looks around, he's ready to go, and he gives it to Young, and Young bounces, and Young stays on his feet. Now that's the kind of running we've expected out of Isaiah Young, Don Biaggi, but we haven't necessarily seen the last couple of games. You betcha. That, down to the 41. He looked like uh, coming out of the starting blocks and, and powertrain where his knees are high and his shoulders are level and people were bouncing. That was great. Timeout Central Spartans. Holy Toledo. Brawley, and again, uh, a, only a former track coach would be able to describe that quite the way that you did. We're going to step back for a couple of commercials, and we'll be back. Brawley 7, Central 0. A&R Construction, serving the Imperial Valley since 1988. 1631 River Drive in Brawley, 760-344-4653. They are the proud sponsors of the Brawley Wildcat broadcast from the Desert Review. Tonight's Desert Review broadcast of the Brawley High School football game is sponsored in part by Dr. Donald Barniski of Vision Care Center, located at 260 Main Street in Brawley. Dr. Barniski provides adult and children's vision care treatment of eye diseases and contact lenses. Phone is 760-351-2020. Go Brawley Wildcats from Dr. Barniski of Vision Care Center. Okay, welcome back, and we've got a honey of a football game, Brawley leading 7-0, and um, Wildcats now with a first and 10 at the central 41-yard line. This drive started back on the Brawley 12. Oh, and Brawley moved, and there we go with another mistake. And I'll tell you, if, uh, already Brawley is leading this game in one category I'd rather not talk about, Don Biaggi. Coach, that's penalty yards. Yeah, uh, too many, too many right now. And so far they've been able to overcome it. But uh, it's not going to, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Come on, kids. You can, still make the, you can still make those blocks and help your teammates, but don't give them a, constantly a five-yard disadvantage. Not a lot of noise. Pretty quiet over here on the central side, as you can well imagine. So if he's getting any noise, it's over on the Brawley side. Lone running back is Isaiah Young. We have an H-back, and they're going to throw out in the flat, and the ball is going to be dropped. It's going to be an incomplete pass. That's Brian Portis, Brandon Portis, and uh, he just plain dropped that football, and he will come off the field. I, I don't know what was... Looking upfield, took his eye off the ball. I don't know what it was. I don't know that it would have been a great play, but he did have some running room. So that's uh, Wildcats suddenly now not executing. Drive stalling a little bit. And here we go. And the way to get it going is to give it to Isaiah. Isaiah is going to pick up just about four, however. 
It's going to be a gain of four yards. Brought down by number 27, Angel Ortiz. Okay, and uh, 23 with a four thing. That's going to bring it, uh, make it third and 11. And the ball is sitting on the central 43-yard line. Yeah, that penalty is given. That a penalty is this uh, changed the, the central. Yeah, the, yeah, we can't. Yeah. Yep. Brawley now with trips down below. No need to force the ball. Wildcats up by a score of seven to zero. The your center is uh, also porous, and I believe that's Brian, not Brandon, his brother. Back to pass is Gutierrez. He oh, and he's picked off. Harley Toledo. He threw that ball almost straight. And Gutierrez gets in there and gets it, and that 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 just was a bad throw. Yeah, he it was too much on a straight line. It had to be looped because he was going downfield, and he had nobody in front of him. And uh, the kid just stepped in front, one step sideways, and had that ball. Got to be careful uh, when you're throwing an online straight line pass. It's I didn't get I didn't get who. Trying to get who got the interception. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't get it either. No problem. So now Central with 58.5 seconds has a first in 10 in Brawley territory. Gary. And they're going to give it to Sullivan. And Sullivan is going to. Two, Charlie Sullivan on the carry for a gain of four yards. So the ball of line of scrimmage was the Brawley 46. And number two is going to pick up four. Bring up a second and six for Central at the Brawley 42 yard line. Brawley, this should be maybe the last play of an exciting first quarter. Central now trying to cash in on the Brawley turnover where Brawley could not cash in on the Central. They're throwing deep. They got a man. Holy, what a catch! Oh my goodness, what a catch by number three. Wow. That was he, uh, a catch. He was uh, covered very well, but the ball got in there just a slight, and he never took his eyes off the ball and latched onto it. Now Central is on the doorstep. First and goal Central, and the ball is on the Four, four or five yard line. Four yard line. The, the four yard line at the Brawley four. Make it a 38 yard pass play. And a great coverage, great catch. Nothing the Wildcats could do about that. And that will be the end of the first quarter with Brawley leading 7 0. But that lead in <laughs> peril, don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Brownie's Diner in Brawley and the Town Pump Restaurant in Westmoreland are proud sponsors of Wildcat Football. Brownie's is open daily from 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. serving delicious American and Mexican food, while the Town Pump serves the best steaks and seafood in the North End from 4.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Go Wildcats from Brownie's and the Town Pump. Wildcat Football is brought to you by Johnny's Burritos with locations in Brawley, Imperial, and El Centro. Johnny's with a full menu of your favorite Mexican and American food and the best burritos in town. That's Johnny's Burritos. Go Wildcats from Johnny's Burritos in Brawley. Okay, welcome back. And uh, Central now with a first and goal from the four-yard line. And it's going to be... Uh, a direct snap to Charlie Sullivan and Sullivan is into the end zone. Sorry, coach. Yeah, he, he had a quick hit right off tackle there and Brawley played it well, but it, he had too much momentum forced the Brawley tacklers back and in, into the end zone. Four yards is not that far to go when you got that leverage. Okay, in for the extra point. And uh, the kick is up, and it is good. 
Number 25, I believe. Or number 20. Okay, so with 11.56 to go, Brawley fails to, ca to cash in the turnover, in fact creates a turnover and an opportunity for Central, and suddenly we have a tie ball game. A couple of notes, Coach. Yeah, uh, Brawley has made uh, six mistakes, five on illegal motion or offsides and one INT. And they had Central on their back heels uh, questioning if they are that good of a team. And then that INT opened it up and gave them all new life. And you can never do that to good football teams because they come right back at you. And now it is. It's a tie score, 7-7. Seven to seven. Brand new ball game, 7-7. Seven, seven. And we'll go back to where we started with Central kicking off. Central def deferred the opening kick that didn't seem like it made a lot of sense at the time. But now they will have the opening kick of the second half. Deep for the Brawley High Wildcats. And uh, a kind of a pooch kicked. Number four takes it on. Uh, and he gets a little bit outside. Nice run trying to get going. A hit out of bounds. And i don't not so sure about that one. And uh, it being the bell game, uh, tempers fly. So again, a nice return. Uh, number four, Brandon Porras. Porras. First and 10 on uh, Brawley's 40. He's getting some very nice blockings. That's twice in the kickoffs that he's got real good blocking and was able to break in and then out to the sideline. Okay, let's see what Ethan Gutierrez can do for the Wildcats with wides and slots right and left. Lone running back is Tanzer Carranza, I think. No, it's Isaiah Young. Young's going to try to run it all the way, and he's finally hauled down. But he just was kind of pulled from behind. And he gets up, and he is had a bad ankle and is limping pretty badly as he was not tackled as much as he was hauled down. So Young, and we're going to have to have a timeout to get him off the field, I believe. It'll be first and ten Wildcats, but Coach Don Biaggi, that might have been a costly play. Yeah, great blocking on the left side of the line by the Wildcats. Gave him everything he needed, and then they continued downfield, and he was able to move away from the central uh, tacklers until they got him and then they hog tied him and uh, as you can see those are here watching uh, he came down wrong on that on that leg he is walking off now but uh, Doc over there is uh, Doc Freed Doc Freed is going to have to work some miracles and uh, see what they can do in the taping job if he can be uh, get back on here right now we got number uh, 40 two in there, Tanner has taken over, Carranza, and uh, here we go. Okay, a gain of 47 yards for Isaiah Young, his longest run in weeks, and it ends tragically, but you could tell that that was not going to be very good. Tanner Carranza just kind of bulls his way forward, and uh, Tanner will pick up just about two. Okay, by number 42. Up the middle, it's going to be stopped for a short game. Anyway. That is Down not exactly 20, where you want to attack Central. That you got to bounce that a little 22 bit. 22-yard line. It'll be down to the 22 where it'll be second and eight. So get really a gain of one. Make it second and nine at the 22. And the Wildcats now again with a slot and a wide receiver right and left. Lone back is Carranza. They oh, and the ball's on the ground. And again, Ethan. Ball's going to be thrown in the backfield, but covered up by number 13, Ethan Gutierrez. It is going to be a loss of about six yards between the third and 16. So a fumble in minus six. And again, Wildcats not executing 
the way a team that wants to win this game should be executing. They came out strong, but uh, the Wildcats have, have been their own worst enemy. Yeah, now the linemen and everybody else on that team are going to have to say, okay, we got our new formation in, and now let's put the wood to them. It's going to be a little different game now, and we're going to do it. Okay, Gutierrez now with a third and 15, four down territory. He gets pressured. He looks. He takes the ball in, skirts down the sideline, not afraid to cut it back inside. And he has a nice run and gets a lot of that loss back. Nice scramble by Down Ethan Gutierrez. 18 yard line. So it'll be fourth. Uh, five looks like. Fourth and about, uh, yeah, long five. We'll call it six on the uh, central 18 yard line. And Brawley is not going to try to get a field goal. They're going to try to get the six yards. They spread one wide out, and that's Washington. He goes to the top of your screen. Everybody else is inside, and Isaiah Young is back in the game. And suddenly, Brawley doesn't like the looks of something, and they call timeout. With nine minutes to play in the, in the first half, Brawley 7, Central 7, Wildcats with a critical fourth down, and we'll get to that after this. This portion of Wildcat football is brought to you by Clicka Parker Insurance Brokers, located at 350 G Street in Brawley. Stop by and talk with Jeff or Holly, or give them a call at 760-344-0600. That's Clicka Parker Insurance Brokers. Go Wildcats from Clicka Parker Insurance. Man Company in Brawley proudly acknowledges and salutes the men and women of our military, law enforcement, medical responders, and firefighters. The Man Company offers quality shell lubricants, motor oils, grease, and gear oils. You'll find the quality you need at the Man Company in Brawley. Phone 760-344-1313. Go Brawley Wildcats! From the Man Company, located at 1313 Main Street in Brawley. On fourth down, the give is to Tanner Carranza, and he, actually, I think it's Isaiah Young. And Young doesn't get anywhere, and that's going to fire up. Was that Caron? No, that was Young. That was Young. Uh, he might be tender on that leg, Don. I don't know if they sh he should have been in there at this uh, point. They were looking for that all the way. The lineup, the lineup knew uh, the formation of Brawley, and the lineup, the scouting report must have showed that that's what Brawley was going to do. And uh, they were right there. He just got one or two steps across the line of scrimmage, and they had three three tacklers on. Well, that, yeah, and not much you can do about that. Now Central gets the ball back, and on first and ten, they're going to get it to number three, and he gets buried by a plethora of Wildcats. Who was at the bottom of that? That was 32. 32 of Brawley. 32 for the Brawley High Wildcats. That's uh, Mario Casadas, an inside linebacker, made the first hit. That was uh, number, no, that was three, right? They tried yeah. number three. And that's a two-yard loss, two-and-a-half-yard loss. Number three gets a minus two, so that's going to bring up a second and 12. we got and a the pass ball, coming over here. And the ball is at the 15-yard line. And out to the flat, and the pass is caught by Marini. And then he is going to get buried. So Marini makes the catch, but the Wildcats swarm to tackle him. And uh, that'll be third down and uh, two for a first, two and a half for a first down. So third and two, so it's a 10 yard gain on that little pass out into the flat. Third and two, ball now at the central 25. Quarterback. Quarterback, and this time he gets hit, and he's not going anywhere. Number 12 was on the tackle right away. Number 12, Aiden Torres was having none of that. And the ball is going to make it fourth and one. And uh, let's see what central does. Now they're going to punt it out, yes. Looks like a punt team. On the line. 
That's where he was tackled on the line, not where they spotted it. Okay, well, yeah. All right, they're not spotting the ball correctly. You might be able to watch that at home on the webcast. Deep for the Wildcats, they have one guy, and they're coming after the ball, and they don't get it. And it's a very poor punt, and it goes out of bounds. It can't be any closer than the 40 because it went out of bounds at, at least the 39-yard line. He's got and they're spotted gonna, at the 30, 35. 30, yeah, 40. right here. No, this guy came down and spotting it at the 37-yard line. Okay. At the 37-yard line. And the Wildcats now with about 6.58 to go in a 7-7 ball game. It's a honey of a football game. And if the Wildcats could stop self-destructing on certain plays, it might be even honeyer. Brawley now in central territory. Ethan Gutierrez is going to take it on first down. Tucks it back in and throws it in and out of the hands of Robert Platt, and again, he should have just led him on that one, Don. He put a little too much mustard on that. Yeah, that was that was in and out, in and out. But that's one that Platt doesn't doesn't drop, and I don't know what happened on that one. It was it was there for him. He likes those kinds of passes. He, yeah, I think it was just a little bit out where his hands had to catch it instead of him being able to catch it with his body. Going to bring up a second and ten. Brawley now with an excellent opportunity to try to break this 7-7 tie. Young is back in at running back, and he's going to get the call. And he's going to follow the left side of his line. That's big number 77 out there. That's uh, Levangelis Pittman leading the blocking, and he went right in behind him, picked up about four. So it's... Uh, that's a nice first down play, third not necessarily third and six. Not necessarily what you want to have third and six, but let's see what the Wildcats are going to do. The ball's going to be spotted at the central 34. <clears throat> Big third down for the Wildcats. They actually have two downs to get six yards. And here we go. And it pulls it back in, and now with, with uh, Platt seven, 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 able seven. to curl back and give him his numbers as a target, a much different look than that pass that uh, Platt was not able to hold on to. Yeah, the first pass that he wasn't hold on to was a, a, a hit and go, and this one here was a hook and then a rotation, and he was able to catch it, rotate it, and picked up another two and a half yards. So perfect design play and well executed. All right, here come the Wildcats with a first and 10. They are at their own, uh, they're at the central, excuse me, 24-yard line. We're in a 7-7 tie. Hope you're enjoying it. Tom Ronco and Coach Don Biaggi bringing you all the action. And here we go. There goes Young. And uh, whether they were ready for that or not, again, big number 71 leading the blocking for the Brawley High Wildcats. Jonathan Garcia, yeah. and uh, that time a little bit of a counter. He's been going off to the left. That time he veered back to the right. And Young, who's just finding, you know, those are tough yards, but they're important yards. Yeah, 71 and 74 had a real good push. Okay, 74 would be Anthony Arriaga. It's going to bring up a second and six for the Wildcats. Gutierrez now with a wide up on the top. That's Washington. He hold, pulls it back. Oh, and he throws it straight to Central. Oh, my business. And the Wildcats, Isaiah Young catches up to him. I don't know what happened on that one. No, uh, the ball... It, it, there was two centrals standing there, and the Brawley Wildcat was further down the field, and that ball came out and and right into the hands, and again, giving the life back to El Central. <clears throat> so with 4.50 to go, it's going to be first and 10 central, and... And Charlie is going to get nowhere. He's going to lose a couple. And that uh, 
drive started on the 22 yard line. So a loss of two takes it back to make it second and 12 from the central 20. Central now with kind of motion. Again, guy's going to be coming H back. They're going to try to get it out. Set up a little screen to Marini. And the Wildcats are there, and Marini goes down. Number 31 nice, on the tackle. Nice open field tackle out there for the Brawley High Wildcats by Chris Camilo. Camilo just a sophomore. His brother Daniel Camilo Jr. is a junior. So we got a couple more years of the Camilo boys. Dad, Daniel Camilo, played for the Brawley High Wildcats in the 1990s. And uh, mom is Stacy. <laughs> okay, there you go. Got it all. Dog's, na know. dog's name is Fido. Hey, you got you got to you got to keep <laughs> make sure mom gets in there too. She had something to do with this. Yes, she did. Makes it third pass, and pass. about and about oh. oh, he's down and sacked. 25. 25 on a blitz. 25, 67. 25 is freshman Matthew Moreno, who shot the gap, got there first. Cleaning it up was number 67, Bernie Bustamante, and a, a, um, a big sack. And it's going to bring up a fourth and a bunch. And the punt will take place from the Central 14. Oh, and Brawley almost gets it. And another straight up punt. A home run in a grain elevator, but gets Central gets a great roll out of it. And they picked up an extra 10 yards on the roll. Wildcats almost got that, Coach. That's for sure. The, the kid is looking. He's, he's looking up. And so when he goes to kick it, that toe's coming up, and that ball's going straight up. 2.41 to go. It's going to be Brawley's football with 2.41 to go. And they're going to have a first and 10, again, in central territory at the central 41. And, Coach, they got to start doing something with these. Yeah, yeah. You can't have these many chances and throw the, throw the, uh, the points in the toilet. Okay, Brawley with trips. Gutierrez looks. He gives it. Now he pulls it back in, and he's going to run out of bounds kind of wisely. And he'll pick up three or four. He'll pick up four, and he knows that he does not have to pick up more than that. <clears throat> so it'll be second and six. The ball now advanced to the 38. 38s. Looks like second and seven. Yeah, second and seven. So I was going to say not a gain of four. Let's make it a gain of three. Not that critical, but it's a game of inches, they tell me. Here come the Wildcats, kind of taking their time coming out of the... Uh, uh, suddenly they're slowing the pace a little bit. And the Wildcats now with wide receivers right and left, and they're going to give it to Isaiah Young, and Young's going to get up in there and get some tough yards. And I'll tell you what, Don Biagi, whatever, whatever ailed him, he's, he's proven that he's not going to quit in this game. Yeah, it was a great run, 17 uh, Platt. He was the lead blocker, and then you got that left side, right side of the line that cracked down, and it had a real big opening over there, well executed. Okay, just got enough. Carranza back in, Tanner is back in in the backfield. Just enough for a first down, and here go the Tanner Wildcats. Tanner breaks through. Oh. Tanner! Oh, my goodness. And it fumbles the football, and somebody got to get over there and get this central kid. Oh, nice. That was Ethan Gutierrez that put the lick on that. Was that Ethan who carried yeah. the ball or Tanner? Ethan, Ethan had, Ethan had the ball and fumbled. And <laughs> And we no sooner say this, I think I'm going to stop saying it. Okay, <laughs> now we're going to have... It's going to be a timeout. Rolling. 
Timeout, Brawley Wildcats, and, and John Self is going to talk to the team. And uh, they, I, I don't know what to tell you, but this game has hinged on Ethan Gutierrez, and so far he's been okay. Have you been to the new ag business in Brawley? Tony and Travis Ojeda are down on the corner of Best Road and Jones, across from the airport. Ojeda Industries has heavy-duty hubs, spindles, and trailer parts. They have American roller chain and all sorts of bearings. Of course, they have a complete line of hydraulic hoses and adapters in both standard and metric. You know Tony and Travis Ojeda, so stop by and see them. This portion of Wildcat football is brought to you by Clicka Parker Insurance Brokers, located at 350 G Street. Okay, we're going to jump back in as we have uh, a first and 10 for the Central Spartans following uh, another Brawley turnover. They put Marini in motion, sent him back, and the Wildcats are going to jump in there. That was number 37, uh, Brody Enders, and Enders just stepped into the neutral zone, and here go the Wildcats. So that's going to make it first and five, and again, making it easy, Coach. Yeah, Brawley is uh, keeping Central in this game. Brawley should be whacking them and demoralizing them. But And no. here's Rodriguez. He's got somebody wide open, and it's almost intercepted. <laughs> Out there, Aiden Torres, and he just... He, he thought he had it, and he shouldn't have went on an angle, Don. He should have went laterally north. Yep. And now he's coming up a little gimpy because he went way up high for that. Yeah, I thought I thought it was going to be in his big paws and then being able to hit had a wide open area because everybody was over here to the right and he threw back. And uh, I don't know, something happened when he... Uh, Let go of it. Hanged on the ball. Maybe, he, maybe it went off when he hit the ground and jarred his hip. 2.05 to go. And again, not uh, Central with pretty much a free play because of the of the over the middle, and they have number ten. And uh, nice, nobody. Skyler with the reception for the Central Spartans, and and Central is starting to kind of pick the Wildcats apart a little bit. Number ten, has got the interception, and he's got most all of the passes and. Uh, they, they've got to realize uh, you're going to either go man to man or you're going to have, have to have spot two men keep an eye on him. All right, that's going to give Central a first and ten at Another the probably pass. 36. Here comes the rush, and they're going to have a flag, and I think this is going to finally be a holding call. That Rodriguez sat back there for a heck of a long time, and they're going to call that, I believe, on number 60 for Central. He is pleading his case, but this... First penalty, I believe, against the Spartans. I believe so. They've played a pretty clean ball game. Holding against Central, and Brawley will take it. Right around the line, a little bit below the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be a little bit more than the n normal 10 yards. And that's going to make it, of course, first and uh, about pro probably 21. The ball now back on the Brawley 46. Oh. Oh. Drop pass. Drop pass three. out there by number three. Number three is going to be dropped incomplete. And uh, good coverage out there for the Brawley Wildcats by number six. That will be Daniel Camilo, Jr. And so that is going to bring up um, a second down. Second and 20, and the ball at the 46-yard uh, line of Brawley. Okay, so Central now with a minute 25 to go, calls timeout. And we're going to have a 20-minute halftime. 
And I'm going to go ahead and finish the Click of Parker Insurance. We'll just start it from the beginning. Coach Don Biaggi and myself, Tom Runkle, will be back after this. This portion of Wildcat football is brought to you by Clicka Parker Insurance Brokers, located at 350 G Street in Raleigh. Stop by and talk with Jeff or Holly or give them a call at 760-344-0600. That's Clicka Parker Insurance Brokers. Go Wildcats from Clicka Parker Insurance. Tonight's Desert Review broadcast of the Brawley High School football game is sponsored in part by Dr. Donald Barniski of Vision Care Center, located at 260 Main Street in Brawley. Dr. Barniski provides adult and children's vision care treatment of eye diseases and contact lenses. Phone is 760-351-2020. Welcome back, and back to pass is Rodriguez. He's got a guy wide open. He's going to throw it deep, but the Wildcats are all back there playing center field, and then some was Aiden Torres. He was standing on the goal line, and Rodriguez kind of pumped that one up, and that was also an incompletion. But because of the penalty, Don, it's only third down. Yeah, only third down. The sack on top of the penalty would have been a much, much nicer outcome for us. And we have about a minute 18 to go here in the first half. 7-7 ball game. And uh, I'll tell you what, if the Wildcats can stop biting themselves or shooting yeah. themselves in, the, got this, in the head, we'd be okay. We got the same formation, and the pass is going. He's looking okay, short. Okay, throwing screen, and he's going to get a first down. And the Wildcats just failed. Oh, no, it's going to be, oh. I think that's a very generous spot. That is a very generous spot. Yeah, the play was well designed and well uh, executed, yeah. executed and hidden. And... Uh, Caught Brawley a little off guard, and then when they reacted, they were able to blast on him real quick. Another pass going over the center. Okay, nice coverage out there for the Brawley High Wildcats by number 24. That's Gilbert. We don't call him Tweety Corrales. Central's fans do not like that, but everybody has a right to the football in high school and college. These guys are watching too much NFL on Sunday where anytime you breathe on the receiver, it's a flag. So an incompletion, but stops the clock. And suddenly a game that was moving along is down to 35 seconds. And uh, we'll see what the Wildcats can do to try to keep Central out of the end zone. They have given them many lives. Back to passes, Rodriguez. He throws over the middle. Nice catch. The volley defender falls down. And a couple of jukes, and the Wildcats have to make that tackle. And the defender fell down trying to get back. And a big play for the Spartans. Okay, a first and ten. And the... And Central is calling a call timeout, I believe. Uh, I, yeah, I don't see why Brawley would with uh, 25.2 seconds to go. I can't see. Where is the ball? So uh, it looks like it's on, on the, the six-yard line. Yeah, it looks like it's on the six-yard line, six or seven-yard line. I look for the, uh, that, the one they scored uh, the, the uh, extra point on, uh, that direct snap off that tackle there. That could be wide open uh, for the uh, Central Spartans. Okay, well, let's hope not. All right, we're going to keep it here for the rest of this as Brawley comes out of the timeout. And, uh, again, Central moving the ball. Brawley playing a little bit, trying to, you know, not pressuring Rodriguez, and that may be something they want to think about yeah. talking over at halftime. Yeah, the uh, Centrals are pretty confident in their passing attack, too, right now. So we'll see what, what 
was designed by coach. Rodriguez is the quarterback. In the backfield, number two is Sullivan. And let's see what happens. Couple of plays left in the half, depending on if they can keep them in bounds. Here come the Wildcats. They throw in the corner, and that ball just was for nobody. Good coverage out there for the Brawley High Wildcats. By number two, we haven't mentioned him, but uh, that's uh, Damian Abarca, and good coverage out there. Now the Wildcats going with a few more, I think uh, one less linebacker and one more defensive back. Nothing comes off the clock but about five seconds. So still second and goal. From the six, they throw. Oh, no. Number six is going to get flagged, and that is Daniel Camilo, and I'm not so sure about that one. No, I got nothing to say. That, that was a, a very poor call, re, re, pretty much reacting to the crowd. In fact, <laughs> you can see it, or you saw it. If you want to re re rewind things, you can take another look at it. I, I, that one I don't agree with at all. The coverage is... And now good. now the ref is over trying to explain something to him. And that what, 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 what he needs to do is work out a little bit more and get, learn, learn the rules. All right, here we go. This is going to be 17.5. Plenty of time when you throw the football. They are now three yards closer. So it's going to be second and goal. They try to throw over the middle, and that one, again, is knocked away. And that's Damian Abarca again. So it was second and goal from the three, and the pass is incomplete. That's going to bring up third and goal from the three. And again, 14.4 seconds. Central has plenty of time to run two more plays. <clears throat> The, the, kid, the killer in this drive so far, there's been a couple of them, but was the screen pass that caught Brawley flat-footed and then they were unable to make the tackle. Okay, clock stopped, 14 seconds. Now one of the referees comes over to talk to the white hat and they're all gonna join in. They all have headsets, I don't know why they have to huddle. Oh, and then the flank official decides, well, if everybody else is going to be there, maybe I better get in on this. It looks like a couple of play central players are in the middle of it listening to. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, well, I, I, I don't know. The, the players are over talking to Coach Rookie Pena, so it's either a timeout or he shouldn't be out on the field talking to anybody. Now he's more out on the field. And the referees are just acting like they don't see anything. Coach John Self standing on the other side, as you can see, with his hands on his hips saying, hey, how come he gets to come out and have like a free timeout? And now more central players come over to talk. I have no idea what the white hat is talking about. And now I guess we're going to play football, but Coach Pena is all the way out to the numbers. <laughs> You talk about a lack of institutional control. Exhibit A. Can you see all right? Yeah, go ahead. All right, here we go. Third down, goal. Third shot for Central. And they're gonna throw across the middle and that one is knocked down out there. Nice play by the Brawley Wildcats by number five. And that is a Makai Washington. Yeah, he had great position all the way down, uh, all the way across in his coverage. And uh, good hands, knocked it away. So I don't know what the conference was about, but it was a free timeout for Central. Because Brawley players stayed on the field as they're supposed to, and Central's players kept shuffling back and forth getting instructions. All right, here we go. Fourth and goal from the three. Seven, seven, tie. 11.1 seconds to go. Can Brawley hold it off one more time? And the ball, no, it's knocked loose. Oh no, they're gonna give him a touchdown.
Not sure who caught it. Twenty-five with the extra point attempt. It is no good. So Central is now stolen the lead back from the Wildcats, or should I say the Wildcats have somewhat handed it to them, but uh, Wildcats with a great stand down there, Coach. But, I mean, you can't have them throwing five or six or seven times into the end zone and not coming up with something. But I saw the ball clearly hit the ground. I don't know that he had possession of it. So yeah, a couple of flaky calls did not help the Wildcats at all. And he, he, was, he, he was hit right away and from the end zone end zone out and I I don't see where he ended up in the end zone so I, I didn't see the ball come out well the ball but, came uh, out almost instantly but they are they yeah. uh, official it already well, again we did, we go go back yeah, to, to the, what we have yourself in the foot that allowed them to do what they just did and and coach has got to have a serious talk look each one of these kids from Broly in the eye and say okay are you done letting them stay in the game Yeah, it's about as poor a first half as I've seen the Wildcats play in a while. And this, in mistakes-wise, and it's it's he should be over the nerves by now. If they don't understand they're in a football game now, I don't know when they're going to pick that up. But here we go. And a little squib kick, of course, they don't want to return. And uh, number 31 is going to take a knee. Nice idea. That's... Uh, Number 31. Chris Camilo took it down, and uh, Brawley will have one play from scrimmage. With five seconds. Central will get the ball to open the second half, and the Wildcats need to come up with some answers at halftime. And one of them is, as you said, Coach, uh, to ask themselves, are we willing to play disciplined football? 0.5 seconds to go. Game started out looking like it was going to be a big night for the Wildcats as they march straight down the field. We'll recap the scoring in a moment here. Brawley's got one play, and I believe they're just going to kind of hand it off. And it's Isaiah Young, and Young is going to just, on a bad pin, get keep fighting. Central's got to be fired up, Coach, going into halftime. A look at the scoreboard. Central 13, Brawley 7, and... Uh, Again, we have met the enemy, and they are us. Yep. We will see what happens. like to remind you, Wildcat football brought to you on the Desert Review and by Wildcat Broadcasting. And uh, brought to you by Doc Barnitsky and Vision Care Center on Main Street. Also by Jordan Central Implements and Brawley, El Centro, and Indio. By Clicka Parker Insurance Company and OK Rubber Tire. One World Beef Packers and Joel Gonzalez and Desert RV. A&R Construction Company and the Man Company by the Dom Team. Doug and Andrew for all your real estate needs. Carter Taylor and Lidco. Clayton Drain Tile Maintenance. Smith Kendall Real Estate and Insurance. Brant Beef. Fry Chapel and Mortuary. And also by Brownies and the Town Pump. And they are reopened. And Johnny's Burritos and El Centro, Brawley and Imperial, and Heart Insurance Centers. And let's let's pick that up. That's the one we've been missing. Here you go. And nationwide is on your side. So you're up and down, kid, look alive. You've been saving for a big man cave. Good luck with that, Dave. So many things you're doing with your life Nationwide is on your side Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. For all your many sides, there's Nationwide. Call Hart Insurance Center, 898 Main Street, Brawley, or in the Prince Plaza, 1503 North Imperial Avenue, El Centro. Since 1945, we have a heart for personal service. Brownies Diner in Brawley and the Town Pump Restaurant in Westmoreland 
are proud sponsors of Wildcat Football. Brownies is open daily from 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. serving delicious American and Mexican food, while the town pump serves the best steaks and seafood in the North End from 4.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Go Wildcats from Brownies and the town pump. Welcome back to halftime. Tom Aronco and uh, just going to take a break here for a second and get back to a few of our sponsors. But we wanted to, uh, we uh, met with Gabe and Juanita Rebelar at Brownies this afternoon. And uh, Gabe reminded us that uh, the town pump is not only back in Westmoreland and open and ready to go, but also that there is no limit except the physical space of the town pump. If you want to have a, uh, a banquet, uh, coming up, time to plan Christmas parties. Yeah, Christmas parties and whatnot. And so uh, the restrictions are slowly coming off of the Imperial Valley. And they're going to, of course, try to you know maintain as much. Uh, but if you've got a, cr a crew that wants to get together, and again, you want to book that now because Christmas, and Thanksgiving, all of that is going to be coming up soon. And we wanted to make sure that Gabe and Juanita uh, got that message from Gabe and Juanita got out to us. We're going to be back in a moment um, after this. Have you been to the new ag business in Brawley? Tony and Travis Ojeda are down on the corner of Best Road and Jones across from the airport. Ojeda Industries has heavy-duty hubs, spindles, and trailer parts. They have American roller chain and all sorts of bearings. Of course, they have a complete line of hydraulic hoses and adapters in both standard and metric. You know Tony and Travis Ojeda, so stop by and see them. Broadcast rights to this BOHS contest have been granted to the Desert Review by Brawley Union High School District and is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the production without the express written consent of the Brawley Union High School District is prohibited. Man Company in Brawley proudly acknowledges and salutes the men and women of our military, law enforcement, medical responders, and firefighters. The Man Company offers quality shell lubricants, motor oils, grease, and gear oils. You'll find the quality you need at the Man Company in Brawley. Phone 760-344-1313. Go Brawley Wildcats! From the Man Company, located at 1313 Main Street in Brawley. Back at Cal Jones Field on the campus of Central Union High School, as you can see, the great Spartan band under Coach uh, Director Renee Baker is out there and uh, doing a very, uh, very beautiful halftime show, as they always do. Lots of flags. Got the uh, Spartines, uh, as you look at your screen on the right side, the flags, which are part of the uh, band uh, on the left side. Just a, uh, a great, uh, great show at halftime. And uh, let's take a moment, uh, Coach Don Biaggi, and recap that first half scoring. The Wildcats came like they were shot out of a cannon. After Central won the toss and deferred, probably looked like they were just going to make them pay. The return by Daniel Camilo Jr. went out to the 35-yard line. And then Isaiah Young picked up 20 yards on the first play from scrimmage, taking the ball from the Brawley 35 all the way to the Central 45. And then uh, number 42, Tanner Carranza, came in. He picked up five more yards, or actually six yards, <coughs> after Ethan Gutierrez hit uh, Camilo with a five-yard little pass. Uh, Brawley then, uh, Carranza ran for nine yards. Uh, Gutierrez ran for nine yards. Uh, Young ran for seven yards. And then Young ran the final nine yards for a touchdown. And just like that, Brawley was up 7-0. And coach, somewhere along the line, we abandoned that. Yeah, they uh, they got, I think, a little bit over excited and started making silly mistakes, especially when you go to jump off sides and you know as you're moving that what am I doing? 
because that's that's the look uh, through my field glasses that I saw on the faces of Brawley. But in that first half, there was seven or eight errors uh, by Brawley that ki has kept Central in this ball game. And uh, Brawley, as I said earlier, Brawley's coach is going to have to look these guys in the eyes and say, "Are you are you done keeping Central here in this game, or are you going to play football and take control?" Well, I tell you, it's not that they kept them in the game; it has given them control of the game. As Central is up, if you just joined us, thirteen to six at halftime, uh, seven, excuse me, and no no need that uh, coach or I can kind of figure out. Uh, it could be nerves. You get an offside to start. The game okay maybe some nerves but uh, Brawley clearly came out with a clean drive and quite frankly after that Brawley does not have another clean drive you look at the uh, <clears throat> uh, their second possession they they were able to uh, they almost Central almost scored on their first possession but uh, Brawley was able to come up with a fumble recovery and they were able to drive the ball a little bit nice pass from uh, Gutierrez to Robert Platt and then an offside penalty, and then an incompletion, and then an interception. Uh, and both of the interceptions on Ethan Gutierrez, and I love the young man, but both of them have been somewhat inexplicable, Don. Yeah, he doesn't usually do that because he can tell the difference between blue and white. And those passes were right there for the interception, and I believe both of them were number 10 for El Central. Yeah, Central pulling out all of the stops tonight. They have new uniforms, in case you don't recognize the Central uniform. They had special uniforms made for tonight with the players' names on it. So Coach Rookie Pena is pulling out all the stops as he knows this was not going to be an easy football game. And uh, But Brawley, again, has uh, kind of been stepping up and making it a little easier. We're going to be back after these messages. Nationwide is on your side So you're up at dawn, kid, look alive You've been saving for a big man cave Good luck with that, Dave So many things you're doing with your life Nationwide is on your side Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. For all your many sides, there's Nationwide. Call Hart Insurance Center, 898 Main Street, Brawley, or in the Prince Plaza, 1503 North Imperial Avenue, El Centro. Since 1945, we have a heart for personal service. A&R Construction, serving the Imperial Valley since 1988. 1631 River Drive in Brawley, 760-344-4653. They are the proud sponsors of the Brawley Wildcat broadcast from the Desert Review. Okay, welcome back to halftime. Hope you're enjoying the great Spartan band. We've had them kind of cut off so you haven't been able to hear them. So uh, we, uh, you are watching them, I am sure. So we're going to take a couple of minute break here and let you listen to the Spartans.
All right, that's enough of the great Spartan band if they're going to be like that and be kind of rude host. Tom Ronco with Coach Don Biaggi getting ready for the second half. And uh, really, Coach, it's Brawley's trailing by a score. Should possibly be up by at least a score. And really, as you pointed out, and we talked a little bit off mic, they don't have to do anything but play Brawley football the way they have been for the last nine games. But That's suddenly right. tonight, the people, as you pointed out, that Brawley depends on to make plays uh, are not making them. So if we sound a little disappointed, it's because we've been watching these young men for well, myself all spring, all fall, and I'm not recognizing this team at certain spots. Yeah, the... the the key kids uh, are the ones that are trying to lead, but they're, they're leading in a way that they're making silly errors that they would never make. So the deep breath in the locker room, the regrouping in the locker room, and coming out and just getting back to Brawley football. The running, the hitting, the tackling, the passing, the cutting, the receiving. All that is is now got to come back into play and make sure it is air-free ball. Okay, as we get ready for the second half, the Spartan band will be leaving the field, but we'll have another three minutes uh, to get in there. Um, Want to give a shout out, my normal shout out to the fam up in, uh, well, in two areas. First of all, up in San Jose. Want to give a shout out to Russell Thomas uh, and Eleanor Erlinda Solomini. I miss my two little, the two little ones, uh, and we'll be up there with you soon. And also to the Ronco bunch, as they keep growing. Uh, my son David and uh, my daughter Michelle, of course, in San Jose. My son David in Newport Beach. And the Ronco boys, who one of these days I hope to be able to watch play high school football, would uh, be Griffin, uh, Tate, Christopher, and Rowan. And they are in Newport Beach. And uh, uh, glad everybody could join us. And a great halftime. And what could have been a great first half. And I think that's it. I'm, I, You know, I've called plenty of games where Brawley just has gone out and been dominated. But this one just has an eerie feel to it, Coach. Yeah. Right now, there, there is no feel about who is going to take control. And... It, when that happens, you, it's a scary proposition for both coaches because it can go either way sour real fast. Well, and I think the last drive that Brawley just kind of gifted them, I'm sorry, it was another fumble. You know, they've had four turnovers in the first half. Then they immediately go offside and give them a first and five. And <clears throat> a couple of iffy penalties. But that last one where they were able to central Don take five or six shots from inside the 10 yard line and I and they gave Rodriguez time I think Brawley felt hey we're defending a smaller field so we can do this but with the referees I don't know that I wouldn't have jail broke and just tried to get Rodriguez and bury him around the 20 yard line and 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 just you know put some fear in him I don't know it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to say, and the coaches almost pulled it off. They, they were at least six shots into the end zone before they got the touchdown. And uh, I, I don't know. It's a lot to ask of young men to, to cover, and as I say, a couple of very questionable calls. And when you know that's going to happen, you, you need to be, uh, I would say, a little more aggressive. Let's see what Coach John Self and his staff comes up with. Uh, usually make adjustments at halftime. I don't know that Coach Rookie Pena can do any more with the Spartans than he did. Do you? No, he he's he's given them all that he needs to give them to to make to make a good job of it and con and control the field, etc. But they have not reciprocated. And Brawley, the same thing. John has given them everything and put them in great positions to do a number of scoring like they've done in previous games and they have given away because in the beginning uh, the quarterback number seven Rodriguez he was he was in in problems excuse me 
I got to see the clock. Thank you. Well, we'll see what happens. I'd like to remind you, Wildcat Football brought to you by a &R Construction Company, the Man Company on Main Street in Brawley, and Fry Chapel in Mortuary. Also by Heart Insurance Centers in Brawley and El Centro, Johnny's Burritos in Brawley, El Centro, and Imperial, Brownies and the Town Pump now reopened in Westmoreland. Um, Doc Barnitsky and Vision Care Center on Main Street, One World Beef Packers, Desert RV, Brant Beef, and we haven't talked enough about Brant Beef. Uh, we have throughout the season. That's just uh, becoming a kind of a worldwide brand, literally. Yeah. And uh, you uh, featured at the Del Mar racetrack for the entire race season. Uh, they're featuring the stakes and everything else. And uh, the Wildcats uh, able to... Uh, or uh, thank you for sponsoring the Wildcats, uh, Mark Brandt out there and the Brandt family. Uh, also uh, by Smith Candle Insurance and Real Estate, Clayton Drain Tile and Maintenance, Carter Taylor and the Lidco Company, uh, Andrew and um, Doug Dom for Dom Real Estate, and I, I should have <laughs> somewhere I should have a. Uh, commercial on them, but uh, for any of your kind of real estate needs, be it uh, residential, commercial, uh, agricultural, certainly. Doug knows dirt used to be one of our, our old lines in the uh, KROP era, and uh, Doug does know dirt. And, uh, and why don't we just want to thank them all, and uh, hopefully this second half is going to keep you uh, glued to what's going on, and uh, um, We'll see what happens. Here comes the referees, and, and again, I <laughs> kind of missing an official who is usually a fixture here, and um, not sure these guys are ready for prime time. But let's hope that uh, we uh, we get some calls in the second half and everything evens itself out. Certainly, no no excuses for all the errors that uh, Brawley has made, and we'll see if. Uh, if we can get something going now. Okay, everybody kind of jumping up and down. Central, as we noted, will receive the opening kick of the second half. They deferred, and Brawley made them pay for that. But really, after the eight-minute mark of the four minutes into the game, Don, it, it's, it's pretty much been Brawley shooting themselves in the foot and Central, you know, kind of taking advantage of it. So, if the yeah. Wildcats can get themselves straight, I think the game will straighten itself out all on its own. That's true. And, uh, again, uh, we're going to see how the kids responded to what John had to say about their first half and their game. And uh, that's going to be the key because they are a quality bunch of kids, but anytime you're in a tough game and what have you, you got to prove it all over again. Yep. <laughs> okay, we're just kind of waiting for Central to get out there. And uh, Jorge Jarro, who had a uh, one kickoff, and that uh, ended up with some pretty good field position as uh, Central was able to get a first and ten. At, at, the, uh, at their own 41-yard line. Uh, but uh, Brawley trying to keep it in the 35, and we'll see if Haro can come out. And again, uh, big question simply is, can Brawley play within themselves? A lot of pressure, though. Pressure builds every year you don't win the bell. <laughs> so this is four years' worth of pressure. Jorge with a kick up in the air. It's going to be taken with the good hands people. And Central, oh, nice hit out there by number 31 for the Brawley Wildcats. And uh, number three, who has done a lot of damage for the Central Spartans, uh, was the brunt of that. It looked uh, probably Sergio Garcia. He is just a freshman, Don, and a key player in the middle of this game and not backing down from anybody. You betcha. And so Central is going to have a, a first and ten at their own 45-yard line. And I, I don't know if that's where Brawley wanted to, them to start this drive. Rodriguez is a quarterback, puts Marini in motion. 
And the Wildcats just kind of reset on that one. And there's a run, and it's going to be good for a couple yards, and I believe that's Charlie Sullivan. Yep. By number two, gain of two yards. And he'll pick up two. So Central comes out and says, okay, let's just kind of lull you a little bit into sleep, I would say. It's a pass. Okay, this is, uh, coach is looking for a pass play here. All right, here we go. Second and eight for Central. Central up 13-7, just the second play of the first quarter. Rodriguez is going to roll out. Now he's got a ball, and he's at good coverage out there by number 24 for the Brawley Wildcats, and that's uh, Tweedy. That's um, there was Gilbert good. Corrales, that was and he had, he, he had to throw it low, did uh, Rodriguez, and... Uh, so the Wildcats may be playing a little tougher on that. So far, first couple of plays looking all right. And we'll see what happens on third down and eight. Again, almost at midfield. And Central started this drive with excellent field position and a short field. Rodriguez with Sullivan in the backfield with him, a couple of juniors. Puts a man in motion. And he comes all the way across, and now they're going to try to flood the area. Rodriguez rolls this way, throws out, and it's in and out of the hands of Marini. That was just a little bit of luck. And nobody really up close and tight with Marini. And uh, that... <laughs> yep. The uh, defensive brawl he had was putting uh, more pressure... He spent a lot of time looking at the line than downfield, and then he had to throw because he knew he was going to get hit for a loss. And so at least he, he had that ability in his mind to take care of that and save, save it. Okay, Brawley does not force the punt, and it's going to be a fair catch and a muff, but it's still a fair catch by Daniel Camilo. And then they're going to, he's going to get hit. And that should be a personal foul, but we, we don't know what they're going to call. And again, he was, Camilo muffed the football, which you can do as long as you do not take possession of it. It's just a muff. Now, he could not get up and advance it, but he's also not a fair target. Let's see if they call that or if they wave it off after a lengthy conference. Only between three of them this time. Now the flank official saying, uh, I'll join in on this if you guys can't get it over with. And uh, I, I don't know what, what's there to debate. But a debate there is. In first, any case, it'll be first and ten Brawley with uh, 10.58 to go. And... On the Wildcats, okay. Huh, I thought it, they hit Camilo, but I guess it was a personal foul on Brawley. So Brawley is going to get a personal foul. And again, no major penalties against Central. Lots of penalty yardage against Brawley. So Brawley, which should have started out around the 25-yard line, is going to start... And now, what are, were they at the 11 or 12? Yeah, looks like about the 13. All right, let's see what the Wildcats can do. Now we have another. Did I mention this crew's not ready for prime time? Yep. Oh, this, this delay like this in a game this important is just ridiculous. Yeah, I, and now there's five guys in there discussing where the ball is going to be spotted. Again, just lack of institutional control. And, and, and after all that, nothing. Okay, well, let's see. Now maybe Brawley can play football. Ethan's your quarterback. And he's going to keep it, 
and he's going to get outside. He needs a block, and he gets one. He stays on his feet, still on his feet, and Ethan fights his way all the way out to the 32-yard line. Great run by thir 13. Nice little block out here. Who sprung him? Did you catch that number six, Daniel Camilo? I believe sprung him, but a nice run. And it'll be first and 10 Brawley. And they t advance the ball from their 12 all the way out to where they're supposed to be on the 32-yard line. Yeah, that was a great, uh, great fake that they made because it froze central. And then he was able to get out and make his moves in free territory. So that was, that was a perfect executed play. Brawley now with Gutierrez under center in the, in the uh, double wing tee. Lone back is Isaiah Young, and Young is going to spin his way. Nice spin move by Isaiah. He was hit initially after a gain of about three and spun out for a couple more, Don Biaggi. Yeah, he, uh, he hit in there. He's, he's running real well. His knees are bent and his shoulders are square so that he's taking it on his uh, forearms and his shoulders, and they're, it's hard to get to his legs on that. And he's knocking people around and getting that extra yardage. That's what we need. Okay, he's going to bring up a second and four as Isaiah picks up six. Now the Wildcats go out of the gun. Three on top. That would be to his right, one on his left for Gutierrez. And Gutierrez looks around. Central kind of staying it. They readjust Isaiah now to where he's right behind him. Call for the snap. And here comes again Gutierrez. And... Uh, this time the Central Spartans react a little bit better. And he's going to pick up about two. 56 so it's, it's, on the tackle for uh, Central with a couple of his buddies. Okay, so this is going to bring a third and two at the Brawley 38-yard line. And they can ill afford to turn the ball over, Don. This is a big third down. Very big first down, uh, third down. And uh, let's see what he comes up with. I think there might be a, a, a little a quick play with a little deception in here. He's going to be, gonna be under. Up. Gutierrez is under center. He's got trips. This is not usually a passing thing, and he's going to give it to Young, and Young is going to get the first down. Just riding that big offensive line, and behind number 74 for the Wildcats, that's Anthony Arriaga, and the Wildcats... With 23, pick up a first and 10. They are now at their own uh, 40, 30, 44-yard line, and the give is Gutierrez actually keeps it himself. Yeah, it was a, it was a great play. Uh, he had the option of pitching it or turning it up, and what he saw was a good alley that he had and so he turned it up and then he made the long dive trying to go along the sidelines before he went out to get as much um, yardage as he possibly could. Second and a long five, maybe six. Brawley trying to move the football again out of the shotgun. Now two wides, two slots. Running back is Young. Gutierrez fakes and he's got people chasing him. Now he throws it out to Camilo and Camilo is going to pick up two or three yards. That's a design play, and when Ethan does, gets a lot of traffic, he dumps it off to Camilo. That <clears throat> only gained him a couple of yards. Brought down by number five, Heck, actually gave him three, so it's going to make a third and two again, and probably getting into a lot of third and twos. This time, they are at the central... <clears throat> defense. Central 47-yard line. And again, another key third down, Don. Absolutely. It's a, be a, we need a big surge by our line. Okay, Young is a running back. Gutierrez changes things around, looks at Central. Everybody kind of in the box. High snap. They throw it out to Camilo. Camilo's going to have to fight his way, and he is down, and short. he's going to be short by about a half a yard. They went to the other way with the same play. And they needed two, a flag on and the they play. got one. There's a flag on the play. <clears throat> and, of course, a conference. And they're looking at Central. Look, holding on Brawley. Illegal block in the back, of course. Of course, of course. 
Bryant's going to place the ball at the 39-yard line. And that... Bring up a long third down for the Wildcats. Okay, so this is negated. A minus... Wow, 15. This will be about third and 15. So it brings up about, well, it'll be 13 then if it's a third and 15. Yep, that's what it is. So from the point of the foul, it's going to be that. It's going to bring up third and 15 now, and Brawley back in their own territory at the Brawley 39. Gutierrez now is going to need to come up with some magic. And the Wildcats going to move Isaiah up next to him. And here we go. And they're going to come blitzing. The Wildcats throw in a miss tackle. And they're going to say, no, he's, no, they're going to say. We have a flag over here thrown by the official by the central. By the flank official. Brawley would have been back to within one. They picked up the 15, but now we have another flag. And of course, I, I, I don't understand the indecisiveness. If you threw the, if you throw the flag, you ought to know you what call you're doing. The penalty and whatever happens, happens. What does that mean? I surrender. Apparently, we picked up the flag. Oh, yeah, I surrender, yeah. All right, well, they put their heads together, and we got it, came up with a rock pile, and no call. So that play is going to be good. It was a 13 to 6, and that's plus 14, which brings up a fourth and one. And Brawley's going to roll the dice, Don Biaggi. I got news for you. That's only three yards away from where they started their last drive anyway. That's right. So Brawley not too worried about it. Ball on the central 47-yard line, and they need one yard. Everybody in the box. Here come the Wildcats. And Isaiah Young, is, they're, they're going to say he's down. The ball is down. His spot's going to be very, very important. They're both showing, both referees are showing him nowhere near the 46-yard line. Looks like that spot's going to give him the first down. And Isaiah Young, on a fourth and one, is going to basically get 1.1 yard. <laughs> yeah, he, he was right there, that twist and turn that he made. Uh, did it. And uh, got him over there before they pushed him back. Okay, I didn't see what happened on that. Uh, keeper by Gutierrez, and he got... Oh, and an ejection. Number three, the freshman, an ejection of Sergio Garcia. Not only is Garcia out of this game, he's out of the first CIF game. And that's, that is, <laughs> that is a, a Daniel Camilo ain't, doesn't back down from anybody, but he's not a cheap shot artist either. So in defense of him, the, <clears throat> At the central, it was first and 10 at the central 46. Gutierrez was on a keeper, correct? Yeah. And he ran actually away from what ended up being the brunt of the play. And he and got he, sandwiched. He picked up six yards. He got sandwiched and down, and there was a lot of flying around and a lot of blue coming in to make sure because he wasn't going down that easily. And I don't, I don't know what happened. So while the Wildcats have gotten the worst of the calls, that one was an ejection. Coach, Coach Pena wants, of course, an explanation of what's going on, and we'll see if they wave this off. I guess he has to leave the field. 
three has been ejected, I don't think they can take that back. So when it's all the dust settles, it's going to be second and uh, four for the Brawley Wildcats. They are at the central 40-yard line. And again, more conversation. And I, I'm telling you, all of these refs are mic'd up, right? They are mic'd up. They do not have to go cluster to talk to each other. They all have mics. They are mic'd up. Central, of course. And now Brawley. Central fans getting hyped up. Brawley fans on the other side answering. And suddenly we got big game atmosphere. But the bottom line is Brawley is still trailing 13 to 7. And that's the most important thing going on right now. And now Coach John Self wants to talk to the White Hat. I think he's asking why there was no penalty on the ejection. Is it automatic that a penalty would follow an ejection? It would seem to me that if you did something that got you ejected, it was worth a penalty. But that's just me. Call me silly. All right. So coach, after all the dust settled, now the coach is saying, wait a minute, you can't just eject somebody and not, I know in basketball, if they eject you, you get to shoot free throws. It's a personal foul. That's just basketball. I don't know. Coach Don Biaggi, years and years of track. We don't have this problem in track, do you? No. Gun goes okay. off. 558 is going to be a watershed moment. The only time we had that in track was when two distance runners run from each other's team, didn't like each other, and they got into a little pushing and shoving. And uh, one of them shoved too hard. The other one looked at him and said, boom, and took off running, <laughs> continued running. And the other, other athlete went to the ground. So that's the only time that I've ever seen that happen. But uh, it's lucky the uh, track is not in, is in here, not in Europe, because elbowing and shoving and whatever is all legal over there in cross country. And now we're going to get a penalty. And of course, this is going to fire up the Wildcats. Ejection and a penalty. Okay, someone left the bench and entered the field. That was number three. Okay, I, 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 all right. I don't know, man. All right, so anyway, Brawley now ends up with a first and 10 at their central 25. And Gutierrez is gonna give it to uh, number 23, and Isaiah Young is gonna push his way forward. And he is gonna pick up maybe one. Okay, 5.42 to go, 13-7 central. So Brawley is on a quest to try to tie this ball game up or possibly with a successful point after, take a lead. But understand, this is uh, probably not in control of this football game by any means. And again, still 20, 20 second and nine, still 24 yards away. And here's Gutierrez, cuts inside, and Gutierrez gets the skid. He's gonna be brought down about a yard short. He's gonna bring up fourth down. No, it's going to bring up third down. PA announcer getting a little bit out ahead of himself as uh, Ethan picks up eight. It's going to bring down a third and one at the central, well, make it a long one. I'm going to give him seven and make it two. That looks more like two yards to me, huh, coach? Yeah, two yards and... Uh, Ball at the uh, central. Let's see who they got in there. They got uh, Young central in the back. 17. And again, two down territory, so Brawley does not have to get this all on this play. And here comes Central, looking like they're going to shoot the gap. 
Ethan Gutierrez not bothered by that. And they do shoot the gap. And that, we got to come up with something a little more creative than that. Yeah, that's that guy is shooting that gap. You can see him. That's the same thing that uh, was done uh, last week when they shut down Brandon running up the middle because they squeezed down on it. And since he's in there and those are the areas he likes to run, you can't put that much pressure on the line all the time. No, not and when they're shooting the guy. They're the outnumbered. Shot. They're putting seven guys rushing in. And Brawley has not completed a pass of a couple of swing passes in this drive. And you can see Central, they're ready to come, and they're coming with everybody. And again, a quick throw, and he's got it. He should have it. That's right. Robert Platt with the catch. Platt was on the other side. He's going to be right there. And it's going to be a first down. They needed two. They got two. So... What a football game. But again, Brawley's still trailing. And that was a 13, great, that was a 328 great to go. That was a great reception and knowing where the first down marker was. Yeah, he just rolled over and got up and pointed first down. Ball now at the central 15-yard line. Brawley has had the ball for most of the third quarter. And it's been a wild one. And here comes Ethan Gutierrez again. Fakes inside, goes outside, and gets kind of forearm shiver out there by number five. I didn't think you could go up high on somebody's head. No, he was under the under under his chest. Yeah, all right, number five out there getting hyped up. I believe he's in for the ejected number three. So Ethan is going to bring up a second and one inside central territory and that would be at about the six yard line so nine for ethan gutierrez and the wildcats have been able to keep this going and here goes uh, isaiah young and i'll tell you what isaiah may or may not have gotten that first down but you cannot question his character tonight don no, he's, he's plowing hard, but they're squeezing down, El Centro is, and they've also brought up the linebackers a step closer than they were playing all, all, uh, all day. And okay. uh, that, that's plugging things up real quick. He got two and the first down. Put him in motion. Here we go. Here's Isaiah with a hole, and Isaiah walks into the end zone and slams the ball down. Touchdown, Wildcats. Holy Toledo. A drive, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 plays for the Brawley Wildcats to go from their own 12-yard line and score a touchdown and tie this game up. And Jorge Jaro is about to try to unknot the tie. And Hotaro does it. Brawley has the lead, 14-13. First time they have led since eight minutes to go in the opening quarter. Brawley, 14, Central, 13. My, that took so long, I gotta wake my computer up so I can get a commercial. What a game, don't go anywhere. This one is far from over and we'll be back. Nationwide is on your side So you're up at dawn, kid, look alive You've been saving for a big man cave Good luck with that, Dave So many things you're doing with your life Nationwide is on your side Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. For all your many sides, there's Nationwide. Call Hart Insurance Center, 898 Main Street, Brawley, or in the Prince Plaza, 1503 North Imperial Avenue, El Centro. Since 1945, we have a heart for personal service. Welcome back to Cal Jones Field, where the Brawley High Wildcats, who had seen the Central Spartans score 13 unanswered points and lead at halftime 13-7, to took 17 plays and eight minutes and 54 seconds off the clock to score a touchdown. And Hotaro, and it's gonna be a fair catch. And there is such a thing as a fair catch. You just don't see that on NFL Sunday, but there is such a thing in high school and college to protect the players. 
And if you're making millions of dollars, it's there's no such protection. I guess you have good insurance. <laughs> that would be my guess. Lloyds of London. Yeah, yeah, yep, you got that right. Oh, my goodness. All right, so with 2.04 to play. First and 10 on the, uh, looks like the 28. First and 10 central at their own 28-yard line. Rodriguez brings them back out. And again, he's going to give fake a throw. Yes, oh, almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of Chris Camilo. But good, good defensive, good offensive turn defensive play by number four for Central. You, Darion Nelson, who knocked it loose. You, you betcha. He did a great job. He was very alert for himself. He said, I, gotta, I, gotta, I can't let him catch this. Probably suddenly now making some noise on the other side, Don. Coach? Absolutely. All right, here we go. Second and 10. Ball at the central 28. Brawley, and again, they're a little tiptoe. They're going to give it to Charlie uh, Sullivan, and Sullivan's going to get hit and wrapped up immediately the out the there up the by number six, 57, 67. And 67 is Bernie Bustamante. And Big Bernie said, come here, fella, and I will cuddle you. And that he did. Sullivan is going to pick up nothing. And it's going to bring up third and ten. Big third and ten for the Wildcats if they can get a stop here. You don't want to give up the ranch, so we'll see what happens. They're going to let looking Rodriguez pass. Long. He's looking downfield. Oh, oh, nice catch and an immediate hit and drop by 31. number 31, Chris Camilo. And hit him, making the catch out there was number 10, Skyler Cook. And Cook did no, no sooner got the ball than Camilo put, put the uh, wrap on him. So that's going to make it on the 28. It's going to be a gain of three, seven to 10 plus three. It's going to bring up a fourth and eight, uh, make it seven. And back to punt is central. And again, probably to see if they bring everybody or they decide to set up a return. Nope, they're going to just kind of set up a return. And this is a nice kick. Camilo drifting over, makes the fair catch signal, makes the fair catch. He was down the minute his knee touched. So that was, uh, but that, that was a tough ball to catch, Don. Yeah, that, uh, he kicks it high. And not, not necessarily long, but it comes down in a wobbly set. Like a, like a knuckleball. 27.7, probably with a first and 10, and they will be at their 37-yard line. All right, and we'll see what the Wildcats do. Ethan Gutierrez out of the gun, slots and wides, right and left. Quick, gives it to, and, and just bowling his way forward. Right now, Brawley is controlling the line of scrimmage, John. Coach Biagi. Yeah, the uh, line is getting some very good surges, and that's what we're going to need uh, uh, for the rest of this game. They've got to be pushing them back so that a minimum of two yards, and then if you get the lean right, you can push the tacklers off and get another three, so every play getting five yards. The end of the quarter. That is the end of the quarter. This is the Spartan Voodoo fourth quarter chant. Goes back to Cal Jones. I don't know that it ever really worked, but it uh, fires up the Spartan, and they're faithful. And a look at the scoreboard. Brawley, 14. Central, 13. We'll be back with the final eight minutes. Alice Tuxedo, Emma Jones, Farmers Insurance, Broken Yoke, the Fonda Bar and Grill, Cap Council, Hawk AC, Los Cabos Seafood, 47 Cooling and Heating Specialists. All right, we're going to keep it here. I want to talk a little bit about Doug Dom and uh, Doug and Andrew Dom at uh, the Dom team. And... Uh, 
proud sponsor has been with us since KROP. I'm sure they've been in business since around the year 2000, and they have always been there. Big supporters of Wildcat football. Big supporters of Brawley. Doug, of course, wide receiver. Andrew, a quarterback uh, who's running back is Brawley offensive coordinator Brandon Young. So lots of Wildcat uh, go there. Uh, Andrew's uh, two boys. Uh, and... Uh, Played a couple of years ago, a couple of big linemen for the Wildcats, so uh, lots of Wildcats there, and we want to thank them for always stepping up for us every year and helping you bring, helping bring Brawley Wildcat webcast to the Desert Review and supporting Wildcat broadcasting. So here we go in the fourth quarter. Second and six for the Wildcats. It's a direct snap. Ethan pulls it back, gets it out to Platt. Platt with a nice run. Man, he had to reach up, catch that ball, turn around, reset himself. Hey, that was a nice catch and run. Absolutely, and he had control of his body because as he turned, they were coming, converging on him, and he got a good angle and like a plow, and he was able to get those extra yards. So now it's only third and two. Third and a long two, we'll call it one. And a Brawley at the, their own 45. Coach John Self told me there'd be some new wrinkles. I think that's a new play. I think that's something we've coming out of the bye week with. Third and two, big third down. I keep saying that, but they just keep, don't get smaller. And now the Wildcats want a timeout. Okay, it, it's that's how big it is, Coach Don Biaggi. That's I, I don't know how else to tell you it's big. Yeah. Besides which, you come along and you call a timeout. Um, we're gonna do a commercial and we'll be back. Exciting Brawley High Wildcat football is brought to you by Desert RV, locally owned and operated by Joel Gonzalez. Joel and his crew offer RV storage and service and now offer auto body repair and paint as well as a full line of truck accessories. Stop by Desert RV at 1552 Main Street in Brawley or call them at 760-344-9200. Desert RV, a proud sponsor of Brawley Wildcat football. Okay, how big is this third down? Big enough for Brawley to burn a timeout, but you want to get it right, Coach. This could be a momentum-changing play. Brawley up by one, 14-13. And again, Platt running around like he doesn't know where he's supposed to be, which is not how I want to see you coming out of a timeout. Third and two. Everybody in the box for Central. You notice suddenly there's a whole bunch of people there. Gutierrez throws it, but he's hit as he throws, and he is thrown to the ground. And they brought everybody, so give Central credit for... I mean, everybody's in that box, Coach. They're going to have to find a way to get him out of there. You betcha. They're taking... Uh... Okay, Brawley's taking a moment now to reconsider. Ethan kind of thrown around like a rag now. So the question is, do we want to see Tanner Karanzik do his first punt of the night? And the answer is, no, we're not. Brawley fourth and one and a half. And uh, let's go. Let's see if this big line can one more time come up with a play. Camilo and everybody kind of, all right. They got a slot in the wide up top. Under center is Ethan Gutierrez. And there goes, oh my goodness, Enoch shot out of a cannon. They have been running right, running right, running right, and they came back to the left. And holy Toledo, what a line surge. And they just pushed Central clean off that football, Don Biaggi. And that's what we needed. Uh, the uh, talk over there on the sideline said, hey, you know, guys, I need I need you blocking these guys five yards down and keep going. We need this first down. Let's, let's show them. And that's exactly what they did. And the running back was did a very fine job keeping his balance and keeping his shoulders low. I'll tell you what, this is the Isaiah Young we looked, we've seen earlier in the year. Quite frankly, we've hoped for all season. Down to 10 minutes and 22 seconds. Ball on the ground. Ah, oh, what a bad time for that. Hand off uh, from the center to the quarterback did not 
reach everything. I think he pulled out a little quick. I, I, I don't know where that one goes, but anyway, it was not a good, smooth transition. Ethan's taking a beating, and he's over talking to offensive coordinator Brandon Young, and it's going to be a, a, a 13 with a minus 2. So now we've got a second and 12 at the central 47, and let's see what the Wildcats come up with. Honey of a football game, Brawley 14, Central 13. Gutierrez out of the shotgun, has a wide and a slot, and now we have another. Uh, this, this shouldn't be happening at this level at this point in the game. I understand the third down, but now we shouldn't be confused on second down. That's Brawley's second time out. The green ticket is 848 Two, three, four. If it's unclean. All right, so timeout, Brawley, and we'll step back again. Yeah, bring them, bring Tonight's Brawley Wildcat football is sponsored in part by the Fine Folds at Fry Chapel and Mortuary Crematory, always providing the service and care needed for a peaceful, eternal rest. Located at 799 South Brawley Avenue in Brawley. Phone number is 760-412-5537. Go Brawley Wildcats from Fry's Chapel and Mortuary Crematory in Brawley. All right, here we go. Let's see what they come out of this time out with. Last one worked pretty well. Gutierrez is under center, and now they're back in a more traditional double wing T. One wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. And it's going to be a uh, give to Young. Young, and he will pick up about... Uh, he will pick up... Uh, yep, one yard. Uh, that, that, uh, coming out of a timeout with that one, I'm not sure about, but... Uh, Central now at the 46. Brawley needs to hold on to this football. They went for it on fourth down. Big play. And came up with a big one. Let's see what they do now. Now they've got trips to the bottom of your screen. Wide receiver up left on the top. Gutierrez looks over the defense. Has Young behind him. And... Flag on the field. We're going to have a flag on the field. And usually the wide receiver checks with the flank official and says, am I okay? Full start. Wildcats. It's going to make it third and 16. Oh. Guess. I, I, I don't understand that one. Now third and 16. The ball back in Brawley territory at the Brawley 49-yard line. And suddenly things just going awry for the Wildcats. They're going to pull it back. And Ethan Gutierrez is jumped, literally jumped, by number 22. They are shooting everybody, and Ethan's pretty exhausted. Untouched, number 22 shot through and sacked. And now we are going to see the first punt of the night for Brawley. Brings out the punt team. Back to return, and I mean back to return. Yeah, Brawley not with enough players. Tanner Carranza with a nice high looping punt. It's going to be returned. Trying to get outside. And I don't know what Daniel Camilo was. There we go. Oh, and now the Browcats knocked themselves off. Camilo was set to make the tackle. And number 21, Charlie Lai came down and knocked him off the tackle. Yeah. There's a flag on the field. Uh, you got to know where your teammates are. You can't be running around there wild. We have a flag at the... Uh, 39 yard line. Yeah. 
And they were going to have a penalty now against Central. And that is a large one. It's going to take us back to the 19-yard line. All right. So with 7.23 to go, Central will have a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Going to take a shot. Oh, I bet they will. Back to pass is Rodriguez. He's got plenty of time. Now the Wildcats come in and miss. And then he does a little outlet pass. I don't know how he missed him. <laughs> yeah. You know, it doesn't do any good to come flying in and run right by the quarterback. I see that in the NFL all the time. And they're supposed to know better for $5 million? Yeah, yeah and, they, and they get paid $5 million, so I guess I shouldn't be too hard on a high school kid, right? No. Okay. I love those guys. They say they're a great edge rusher, and they go right by the quarterback every time. And I go, they're great at what? They're great at what? Anyway, it is a completed pass, so it's going to be second and nine from the 20. Probably up 14-13, and I wish it were more. They throw out in the flat. Oh, nice tackle. Wow. And Platt is there to greet him. And uh, okay, Elijah Perez on the tackle. I'm number trying to five, find him. Number five of Brawley. Uh, Elijah Perez. Where is Perez? Perez, 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 Perez. Okay, Elijah Perez, number eight. So it's seven to eight, minus two. And that's going to bring up a third and ten, basically. So we'll call it minus one. Third and 10 at the central 19-yard line. And Brawley fired up on D, but uh, holding on to a tenuous one-point lead. A fake, pump fake deep, deep, get a hole, and down he goes. Nice tackle. Nice tackle out there. Is that Platt? Was that Platt? Thirty. It looks like thirty-seven. Uh, Thirty-one, maybe, or thirty-seven. Brody Enders. I wouldn't say any names. Okay. You know. <laughs> Till we know. Let me take a look. Doc Farid out there, and he's getting up. Yep, it's Brody. Just probably got a kick in the head or something like that. Well, no, not, not in the head. <laughs> not in the head. I did. I, I'll go with the shoulder. Coaches up here are saying probably a kick in the shoulder, and I, I understand that. It is a sack. It looks like the punt team's coming out. And Central is now going to be deep in their own territory, forced to punt. But I'm telling you what, I did not like the way Ethan Gutierrez walked off the field, Coach. No. He looks like he's out of gas. He's out of gas, and he's got uh, a little soreness in one in his uh, leg. Okay, on the goal line, let's see if Brawley goes for broke. Just don't hit the punter. I'm sure this guy is good at doing that. Brawley tries to get it, and they don't, but they stay away. And staying away from the ball of the Wildcats, it rolls backwards, and it's going to be down at the central 45-yard line. So Brawley with 5'11 to go, clinging to a one-point lead, will have a first and 10 in central territory at the central 45-yard line. Wow, a little more than I bargained for. How about you? I don't know. I, I, we, when we talked about this earlier before the game started, we knew that this was going to be a very emotional game and highly competitive. Uh, competitive and a yeah. lot of hard hitting and not giving up. And so far it has played out all the way. Ethan Gutierrez running on empty. Going to give it. And now a nice hole. And that's Isaiah Young. 
And Isaiah Young is carrying the ball with authority. Down, for, uh, down to the 35, first Plus down. 10. First 10 Wildcats. All right. Well, as everyone else tires, Isaiah not so much, maybe. And I'm telling you, this is a guy we've been looking for for the last four weeks. We suddenly found him. Central loading the box, coach. They know Brawley's going to run. The question now is, can Brawley, that Brawley line, control him? Okay, snap, and there's Isaiah again, and Isaiah's going to take it to the house. Holy Toledo! Oh, the hit in the end zone, which was totally unnecessary by number five. And Isaiah is down. I hopefully, oh no, he got hit. He's cramped up or something, but I, he got a cheap shot in the end zone by number five for the Central Spartans. And we have, I we have 52 over here. Da too. Damian Nelson and Brawley cramping up all over the place, but that's just an unnecessary shot. But number 23, Isaiah Young, who is a senior, grew up listening to Bell Game with his dad. He just hit plus 35, and with 420 to go. And Young is down. I don't know what the heck's going on. That looks like a little more than a... Yeah, they're working on his leg. He... Yeah. Yeah. I could see, I could see him dragging it. All right. <laughs> Drama. I'm a, I'm a little old for this. Drama. I'm a little Drama. old for a lot of things, but I'm a, little, I'm a little old for this and a lot of things. <laughs> I look back and I see a Brawley J head JV coach Rick Rubio, and I was AD on the sidelines when they won the bell back down here in 90, what? 92. That was me, pal. I was younger then. I could take it then. <laughs> I could take it then. Okay, Jorge Jaro, this is important. The kick is up, and it is good. That is important because now Central trailing by a score of 21 to 13. Needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie. They need a, uh, Brawley needs to play real snark football and get a takeaway. I think at this point in time, yes, yeah, Central's going to come out. They are only behind one score. For all the excitement here in the second half, don't forget what happened in the first half when Brawley fell behind 13-6, to six, a f a 7 for no apparent reason to us. This is what we expected after that first drive, that Brawley could, should continue. However, it's far from over. Isaiah is a key piece of the defense as well. And I don't know who goes in for him. Who goes in for Isaiah on defense? Isaiah's not playing defense tonight. He's not playing. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Just offense. All right. Well, they're all in white and they all look the same to me. They're all kind of short. They're all in white and they all look the same to me. Here we go. Kickoff by Haro is over near the sideline. And bro, oh, wow. What a kamikaze hit out there. Who in the heck did that? 24. 24. 24 for the Brawley High Wildcats. That's Tweety. Gilbert, don't call me. Well, coaches don't call me Tweety Corrales. What a big play by Tweety. Oh, my God. First and 10 central. And the ball is at their own, what would you call that, Don? 25? 25. No, yeah. Nice kick off by Haro. 
Not deep, but enough. And, and here go. comes Sullivan. Oh, and Sullivan breaks out and gets some good yardage. Gets Central's first first down, uh, maybe of the second half. So they decided they're going to run the football. And Sullivan, like he shot out of a gun, picks up a first and ten. So Brawley, maybe they caught them Wildcats spreading out a little bit. He is out to the 30 to the 39 yard line. And so a gain of 14. And back to pass is Rodriguez. He throws, he's got a man, and he's got his man beat. And trying to get to it is <laughs> Gilbert. And Gilbert just ball overthrown. Gilbert was there for, with him, Don, but we've seen Rodriguez thread that needle. That's for sure, but uh, that time he, he threw off the back leg and it just didn't, and followed through, and he had enough arm to make sure it was out there, but it was out a little bit too far. Uh, second and 10 from the 39. Here come the Spartans. Got a guy, they're going to put him in motion. No, now they're going to bring him in, and they're going to probably start him from there. Now they bring him in from the other side. Now they're going to overload, looking like trips. Probably better be careful they're throwing out here. Little screen play. Rodriguez throws, but he's under duress. And chasing him around back there is Alan Carrillo. And Carrillo pressured that throw. Carrillo well, pressured that throw. That was we haven't said much about Alon play. tonight because he's drawn attention. But that was a great pet play by Alon Carrillo. And showed some speed, Don. Rodriguez is, is quick. But Alon kind of, hey, he could have made your big man relay in track. You betcha. Coach Don Biaggi, Tom Ronco, Wildcat Broadcasting on the DesertReview.com on YouTube. Uh, Desert Review on YouTube. Exciting Wildcat football. 3.48 to go here in the Bell game. Brawley up by a score of... Uh, 21 to 13. And here's Rodriguez. There's somebody deep. And oh! Oh! In and out of the hands of Damian Abarca. Abarca got underneath the ball, popped it up, and then just couldn't come up with it. But that's the pick you wanted, Coach Don Biaggi. Yep. Now they're going to... Central has this big decision. Do, I, do we go for it? What plate do we have? Or do we kick it? And I don't think they have much of a choice, but it's the play that's going to be chosen is going to be the key for the Wildcats to stop. I'm thinking they're going to run Charlie again. I'm thinking they're going to run Charlie. Time anyway, out. Time out. Time out. Yep. How important is this play? Time out central. All right. This portion of Wildcat football is brought to you by Clicka Parker Insurance Brokers, located at 350 G Street in Brawley. Stop by and talk with Jeff or Holly or give them a call at 760-344-0600. That's Clicka Parker Insurance Brokers. Go Wildcats from Clicka Parker. Tonight's Desert Review broadcast of the Brawley High School football game is sponsored in part by Dr. Donald Barniski of Vision Care Center, located at 260 Main Street in Brawley. Dr. Barniski provides adult and children's vision care treatment of eye diseases and contact lenses. Phone is 760-351-2020. Go Brawley Wildcats from Dr. Barniski of Vision Care Center. Okay, what will Coach David Rookie Pena come up with? And we are going to find out. <laughs> Three wide. One up at the top. Running back is Charlie. Charlie's going to stay in the block. They're going to try to go. He's got nothing. He's going to heave it down the field, and there's nobody there. And the Wildcats are going to take over on downs. Holy Toledo. <laughs> Damian Abarca who has sat out six games this season to come back for this one and is just a junior, is so very, very happy. 
Hey, what's I don't, you know what, Don? I thought somewhere in that sequence they would have just run Charlie again because he would. He got 14, 14 yards on that play, yeah. at least to keep Brawley honest. But Brawley dropped everybody back. They let Rodriguez have all the time he wanted. But, but he had a, he had a good. Uh, the Brawley had a good rush and had a moon shape, so he was he was locked back in there and had to make a choice. Okay, 3.35 to go. Brawley now hanging on to an eight-point lead. We'll have a first and ten at the Central 39. Brawley has one timeout in Central 2. I believe so. Brawley has one timeout left, I believe, and they've got two. Okay, thank you, Coach Lawrence Landy. Good to see Coach Landy. Man, it's been a while. Oh, there he goes! There he goes! And he's going to do it again! Holy Toledo! He, moments ago, there were a cluster of people around Isaiah Young in that corner of the end zone. We didn't know if he was dead or alive. The verdict just got back. He's alive and well. Holy Toledo. 3.28 to go. Jorge Jaro, not an afterthought, not a footnote. He has kept Brawley in the lead. Gabe Raleigh the lead. Let's see what he can do. The young man midfielder from the football team, from the soccer team. His kick is up, and his kick is good. Brawley now can rest a little bit easier. No, no, the Wildcats are. Rest, huh? I said they can rest a little easier. Brawley 28, Central 13. But the defense needs to go to work. They have a little margin, but not much. Got another takeaway has got to be taken care of. Good defense, another takeaway. Yeah, and Brawley does not have an interception. You know that? For as much as as uh, Rodriguez has chucked that football all over the stadium tonight. That's that all tackle play that uh, Brandon, that uh, Isaiah has scored on on numerous occasions. Uh, since he's been back. And this is the, this coach Don Biaggi joined me, oh, what, five games ago? Yeah. Five games ago, and he did not see the Isaiah that we saw in the first half of the season, because by then he was a marked man and, quite frankly, pretty much beat to a pulp at times and didn't get a chance to rest. He finally got a chance to rest. And this is this is the guy I've been telling you about, okay? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, no, but I mean, it was hard to understand wh why I expected, and all of us, why the Brawley football community and everything uh, wanted so much. Here's Hotero. That's and he 14. Gives a, oh, a nice, nice kick, and it's going to come out to the 35. No. Uh, the uh, Spartans should take over on the 40-yard line. Is it 40? Yeah, it's on the good... 35 plus 5 yards. Oh, God. 40 yard line. Okay. Now, why do you even bother kicking it? <laughs> I just give it to him. All right. Central taking over. It's 328, which is fine. That's what it was. First and 10 at the Central 40 yard line. So they got good field position, coach. And as you say, Brawley cannot afford to let up. Need a turnover. They got to play. Brawley football like they've been playing for the second three, half. The three and three quarters of this game. You, you change anything and they're going to have them re-kick. Oh, they're going to decline it. Oh, illegal motion. Or oh, they're calling else. illegal motion on Brawley on the kickoff. They were offside, yeah. Brawley was? Okay. All right. I guess I got to look for stuff like that. Isn't that a different call this way is what he was? Yeah. Yeah, and he called this. Yeah, yeah, How can you have illegal motion on a kickoff? A you cannot have illegal. I'm telling you. This 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 crew, not Phi Beta Kappa. <laughs> not Phi Beta Kappa. That's all I got to say. As I used to tell my students, 
Maybe you were in the bathroom when we discussed that. <laughs> I know I went over it in class, but you might have missed it, and that's that's not your fault, I guess. You My fault that. for you not accounting that. for all for all hands on deck. Yeah, all hands on deck. There you go. Here we go. All right, let's go. Jorge Hotter. Now let's see what he does. And he's going to kick it again, and it doesn't matter where you kick it out of bounds from. But uh, Central takes it and is immediately taken down at the 40. So they might have gained a yard by all of that. Uh, it looks like about the 35, wasn't it? Well, so they were going to give it to him on the 40, and now they're going to get it on the 32. So they actually lost. They were going to get it on the 40. They get it on the 32. They lost eight. So they lost eight yards. But you got to go for it. You need a couple of scores, and you don't you don't blame uh, Rookie Pena for going for it. No, no, he's got to play this game out to the end. Yep, not over yet. And here we go. Over. They're going to do the trap again. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. fiddle, oh! And somebody ran right by it, number 31. That's Chris Camilo. He and he came running quite, up, and if he had just stopped, enough. he would have got it. He wasn't quite tall enough and went over his hands. I don't think we'll see him on offense anytime soon. <laughs> By the way, what was the JV score? 27-6. 27-6. That was last yesterday afternoon? Wednesday. 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 Okay. All right. So here we go. Incompleted pass. Rodriguez throws over the middle, and that's going to be Skyler. And Skyler, come on, got to make a tackle. And Skyler is going to keep him in bounds. Keep him in bounds. It's going to be a Spartan first game. Come on, John. Keep your defense the way you've been playing it. You've, you've created too many holes now. Buddy, you got three over back. That guy running in the middle there. Okay, here's Rodriguez. He's back to pass. He's going to throw, and he's going to overthrow number nine. A couple of Wildcats closing in. Platt and number 24. Uh, that's uh, Gilbert Corrales. Came flying in. It's going to bring up a second and ten. Again from the 49. Let's see what they do. Back to passes Rodriguez. They, they blitz him and they try to throw. And is that? No. They're going to say he didn't get it. Almost picked off. Brings up third down. Who was that? Uh, Camilo. Daniel. Either one of those brothers can catch at the moment. If Central had called a screen, that might have worked out okay. It was sort of a screen. Third and ten on the 49. Brawley now leading with 3.05 to go. 28-13. Sullivan remains in the backfield, but has not been a factor for a while since he ran for 14 yards about six plays ago. So what do they do? They swing it out to Charlie. He breaks one tackle and then goes down in a clump. Pass complete number two. Charlie Sullivan is going to gain about seven yards. It's going to bring up four through three. Could have, and he, he's not coming. He's jammed his hand. He went down pretty hard. So Sullivan, no, I called that one, didn't I? Yep. I said, where's Sullivan? He heard you. I know. Told the, told Okay, Rodriguez, this is a big to me. fourth down and about five, five. from the Brawley 44-yard line. And here we go. Rodriguez needs the first down. Oh, he gets flat. pressured and a nice cut back in. Oh, nice move. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Somebody better get that guy. What a nice run out there by number nine. Arturo Estrada, a sophomore. And he made a couple of nice moves, Coach Samiaji. Absolutely. It was well disguised. It went out on the flat, but it was disguised with the lineman blocking forward, him coming back around. Would not normally, you, you, everybody would want to go to the sideline and up. Okay, first and 10 at the 20, Brawley 26. 
So that last play was good for about 18 yards. Thrown over the middle. Oh! Last game is broken up. Intended for number 10. Falls incomplete. It's going to bring up second down. That was a great, great play by Gilbert again. By both, uh, both athletes going after that ball. It's the central thought he had it, and so did Brawley. And and uh, as it ended up, nobody got it. But that, that's the way it's got to be. Everybody's got to be going after that thing now. That ball should be taking a beating from both sides. Okay, Central not coming out as spryly as they were. These wide receivers are getting some punishment from the Brawley DBs. Brawley 28-13. Just uh, trying to incomplete passes just prolonging this thing. They're going to loft one up in the end zone. And, and who got it? No, they're going to say it's nobody. It looked like an interception out there for number five for the Brawley Wildcats. And that is Makai Washington. And... I guess he lost it on the way down. I don't know. It looked at me like he caught it. Oh, okay. All right. We'll take the incomplete. Okay, that's going to bring up third and ten. And again, the clock just bleeding along. These plays take about five seconds, but we're down to 141. So we'll see what happens. Third and ten. Brawley 26. Rodriguez takes a deep drop. He's looking to throw. Throws in the end zone. And this one is ripped away from number nine. That's Estrada by number 12 for the Brawley Wildcats. Aiden Torres. And Torres has been running around back there all night waiting to do something like that. And fortunately controlled himself because he can be a little bit of a wild card. Um, and it's going to bring up a fourth and ten. And give the Brawley defense credit. There have been at least 12 incomplete passes in this quarter alone. Everybody goes out. There's Charlie again. They're going to throw over this time. And no, oh, it hit the ground. Oh, no, you can't do that. The ball hit the ground. Oh, Jesus Christ, you guys. Ooh. I mean, I'm sorry he got hit, but they were going for the football. I don't think it was an untar it was a targeted, undefensive. Oh my God. Okay. Let's just hope the guy's okay. At this point in time, let's just hope the young man's okay, and we'll deal with whatever the consequences are. But the ball, to me, it hit the ground, and the play was over. But I will do the replay. 129 to go. That's going to give us a first down. So with 129 left in the fourth quarter, your Spartans are going to have a first down driving down by eight. Down by eight? I'm not my math class. Correction, down by 15. Okay, so that's going to give Central a first and ten at the Brawley... Uh, what is that, uh, 14? Pass is incomplete. Here comes Central up to the line of scrimmage. They got two, two receivers to the left and two to the right with a running back now in motion. Here we go. Back to pass is Rodriguez. Everybody comes. They throw. Touchdown. It had to happen. 
It absolutely had to happen. Coming up with the catch. Now we got to look for an onside kick and a two point conversion. Number two. Seven to two, I believe that's number two, yep. We'll see what they're gonna do. Central has to go for two. That would make the score 28-21, so they don't have a choice. And now Brawley is going to... Brawley. Brawley's gonna call its last timeout? Yeah. Okay, so Brawley's gonna talk about this. Wanted to see what kind of a package they put in there. And we'll keep it here for a moment. Coach, um, just when you fire the ball up that much in modern football, it just appears that, it, it, you know, sooner or later you're going to hit something or get a call, one or the yeah. other. Yeah. I, I mean, it just, I, I'm, I hate to say football's going that way, and I know back in the Bronco Nagurski days when you played with a leather helmet, that we, we didn't, you know, the ball was full of cotton, not air, because it never, nobody ever threw it, and we just wanted it nice and cuddly. But, it, you know, I, I don't necessarily like the swing where, and it puts the officials in a position of having to make calls from behind. There's not as many as in the NFL. The guy made that call. He was 15, 20 yards away and behind the play, and it happened not looking at the play forward, and made the best judgment he could. It's just, you know, Puts a lot of pressure on everybody. We may need yeah. to go to more officials. All right, Central's going to go for two. All right, here we go. Rodriguez with Sullivan. Let's see what they do. He's going to try to pass for it. He's got everybody. He's got Sullivan. He throws. No, no. no. ball. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? How do you call a catch from behind when your That's body... That's the second call from behind. And, they, and the that body blocked horrible. out the catch. Horrible. I'll tell you what. Brawley wins this game. It's going to be in spite of themselves and a lot of help. That was horrible. All right. Brawley, 28. Central, 21 and get ready for an onside kick because there's nothing else that they can do. Seaman. I've had it. Okay, here we go. Now, Brawley is all up. You gotta have one guy back. And who is the guy that's back? Is that Brandon? Yeah, Isaiah. I mean Isaiah. <laughs> I wish you were Brandon. It's Isaiah and it's just as good. Here we go, a minute 20. Brawley looking to see where Central's gonna try to overload it. I don't know that Central has tried another one. Central moving everybody around. Let's see what happens. Here's the kick. The kick is up, and it's caught by number 24, and he's going to keep running. Holy Toledo! He's all the way down to the 20. Holy Toledo! Great catch, and that's Tweedy. Great, great job, man. Tweedy just said, he I'll take sure, care of this. He made sure he grabbed Holy that Toledo. ball first, and then he started to move, and a daylight opened up, and away he went. We still got, we still got two timeouts for Central, I believe, and 1.15 to go, and we've got to get at least one first down. Okay, he took it at about the 50 and drove it all the way down where it's going to be first and 10 at 
the 20. 20. So a 30 yard return. And Brawley is now going to be first and 10 with a minute 15 to go. First and 10 at the central 20 yard line. They, Central can stop the clock two times, and Brawley probably needs to do something, and they're going to give it to, no, they're going to, no, Ethan's going to keep it, and Ethan's going to go down in a clump. He'll be tackled for no gain, bring up second down, timeout for the Spartans. You got, okay. you have to get, design your plays to get three, four yards Yep. on this type of a situation. You cannot do too much the deceptions. And your slants off tackle have been the ones that have been working. Because they're going to use their timeouts, and putting you a third and ten is not going to be the best thing in the world. All right. So Brawley needs to regroup. Tom Ronco with Coach Don Biaggi as Don analyzes. And, you know, Brawley has been to overtime, so they, they understand the, the tough game. I don't know that we've been in a situation, Don, with this team either in the fall, I mean the spring, or now in the fall where they have had to grind it this way. So this might be new territory, but you should be ready for it in a game that you knew was going to be close. Yes, and the, these linemen now are the most important people in Raleigh's team right now. They have got to bust butt. Here goes Isaiah, and Isaiah's going to pick up, Carry up the middle about a short game. Timeout by the Spartans. Okay, second timeout central. All right, let's look ahead a little bit. We can take a second and note, because we know this. This has nothing to do with the outcome of this game. Uh, I, I guess they're giving, uh, they're giving updates on other games, but I don't really care. But we'll look at them and see if we can't find them real quick, probably courtesy of our friends down the corner from KXO. Let's see if we can get that up there. Brawley will be heading to the San Diego CIF playoffs next Friday night. And right now they are the number seven seed. It would appear that they will be hosting at Warren Field, uh, I believe Westview. I could look that up in the CIF power rankings if I can get to division three. And then they would meet again modern day where they to win that game. So right now, number seven, uh, no, Brawley is number eight. Well, right now we would play number nine, Imperial, assuming Imperial won. And that would be a rematch at Brawley. The winner of that would face number one, Mount Carmel. The irony there, John Self, alma mater, is Mount Carmel. There you go. There so you that go. would be some poetic justice. Here go the Wildcats. Third and about nine. Central out of timeouts. And here we go. And there's Isaiah. And Isaiah is... Oh, no, no, no. They're going to... Wait a minute. Are they going to... Nope. They're going to say keep the clock running. Keep the clock running. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the things I will congratulate the officials on. They know where we're playing. And they don't want to give any hesitation. So they immediately went in there and said, no, 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 keep this running. Fourth down and six. So fourth and six at the central uh, 11. No. Uh, yeah. 20, 15, 14, 14 or 13. Okay, here we go. This is a big play. Probably gets a first down, it's over. They're probably not going to get a first down. They're going to take a penalty and let some more time run off the clock. Oh, no, here they go. Here's Ethan Gutierrez. Ethan has it. Can Ethan get in the end zone? Can he? Can he? Yes, touchdown, Wildcats, on the last play of the game. No, second to last play of the game. There's five seconds left. Holy Toledo. That line of scrimmage again would look to me to be about, do you want to give him the 14? All right, we'll give it to him from the 14. 13 plus 14 yards and a touchdown. That, folks, ends this 
Bell game. The Bell will be returning to Brawley for the first time in five years. Probably going to end up with a score that's not going to be befitting of the game, Don, in a lot of ways. No, but as we talked about uh, it at halftime, etc., it's going to be... Oh, so Jorge Jaro finally misses an extra point. That who was going to make, you know, the least mistakes and who could drive the longest was going to... To be this, and Brawley was able to do that, but most importantly, Brawley was able to upset Rodriguez and and keep him from being able to make those passes that he was making earlier, because he was being able to be stationary and make make the throws. He is also very good on the movement, but the movement is okay as long as your head is downfield looking. But he's his head wasn't. So Brawley's defense of Lyman getting through there and disturbing him was a, a big key. And you have to give that defensive line a good credit. The defensive backs also made some spectacular plays knocking those balls away uh, from the receivers. At least 12 incomplete passes in the fourth quarter, Don Biagi, for uh, uh Rodriguez. Yep, your lineman chasing him, getting him yep. to, to look waivers, and then overthrowing his receivers. Uh, that goes to the, the defense. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I knocked this out, Tom. Oh, that's okay. That's mine. Don't worry about it. Oh, and Central looks like they're going to try to score on the last play. And no, it's over. A touchdown saving tackle by the Brawley High Wildcats. It doesn't matter. The bell is going back to Brawley. Brawley is storming the field. And the players are trying to get out there. Coach Rookie Pena classily leading his team out onto the field. And they are trying to shake hands. And... Uh, Brawley just kind of losing a little bit of composure, but you can understand, Don, after so many years that uh, the Wildcats, uh, wow. So right now, the Wally Wildcats will tentatively will play either number nine, Imperial, possibly uh, number 10, Orange Glen, or Bonita Vista, uh, or Westview, and they are trying to chase the players off for the field, I guess the fans, I guess they can't. The players are trying to get them to go, but the players are finally lining up yep. to congratulate one another. This was a superior game, one of the better ones that I have seen played uh, in my career of teaching and coaching in Brawley High School. And, and this kind of stuff is so important to the schools and the kids, especially the kids, after going through what they went through with the lockdowns and everything else and the zooms that made their brains go dead and so on and now they're back in and they're with their friends they're on the field and this is this is spectacular it's great next game up CIF for the Brawley High Wildcats as they win the 78th renewal of the Bell game 34 to 21 in as wild a game as you ever are going to see lots of offense lots of everything uh, and I'll tell you what uh, if, if everybody wasn't ready for this big stage the two teams were at least probably corrected no turnovers uh, very look one penalty I mean it was really a penalty on the second half and Don, they did what we asked them to do at halftime. And I'm sure that Coach John Self asked them, just play Brawley football. You betcha, you betcha. And uh, everybody should be proud uh, of the way Brawley played at the Brawley stands over there. And Central's people should back their team. They played very hard, very well. And uh, I loved it. That's, that's what I, I have seen. Mostly in my career here at Brawley, where both teams played their hearts out. Somebody, somebody in, in the system of winning and losing has got to win, and somebody's going to lose. But that doesn't mean that you didn't do a fantastic job. You can condemn yourself because maybe I made one mistake that cost us. But that's for the athlete 
to determine, not anybody else sitting in the stands. All right. Uh, look at the scoreboard one more time. Brawley 34 and the uh, Central Spartans 21. I want to thank all of our sponsors one more time for a great football season. After I put it away here, back on. For a great, great football season and for backing Wildcat Broadcasting and also backing uh, the Desert Review. We do this for the community of Brawley. We hope you've enjoyed it. We've been there since the first game at Modern Day and now in the CIF playoff San Diego section takes over and has designated uh, broadcast system. Uh, although it may be someone local, I'm not sure, but it probably, in all probability, will not be uh, the Desert Review uh, or Wildcat Broadcasting, but we shall see. Meanwhile, one more big shout-out. Don Barnitsky and the Vision Care Center. Doc, we love you. One World Beef Packers. Desert RV. A&R Construction. The Man Company. Fry Chapel and Mortuary. Brant Beef. Ojeda Industries, Heart Insurance Centers in Brawley and El Centro, Johnny's Burritos in El Centro, Imperial and Brawley, Brownies in the Town Pump, Smith Kendall Insurance and Real Estate, Clayton Drain Tile and Maintenance, Lidco and Carter Taylor, the Dom Team, Doug and Andrew for all your real estate needs, Click Up Parker Insurance and Jordan Central Implements and Brawley, El Centro, and Indio. We want to thank all of you for always being there for us. And uh, we will see you uh, uh, probably next season. For Don Biaggi, Coach Don Biaggi, I'm Tom Ronco. For our crew, Kayla and Laura, good night. <laughs>